Good morning. Welcome to the Land Timber Stream. It is Monday morning. Hope everyone's Monday is starting off right. Uh, mine certainly has. Got a workout in about an hour and a half ago. I'm still recovering, man. It was uh, intense. Um, yeah, we already got the some great stuff going on here in the chat. We got people joining. We got people traveling. We got people off today. Uh, oh, gotcha, dude, for him. Yeah, Veterans Day is typically, I noticed that uh, it's often observed today, so I guess some of the banks are closed, other businesses. Um, it officially, it was yesterday, but that's cool. Nice, dude, for him. I'm sure we'll be getting in some study today. And it is warmer here, show. Uh, 6 a.m. workout, I think it was 71 degrees here in Orlando. So... Yeah, it was nice. I rode my motorcycle in shorts, in short sleeve shirt to the uh, workout this morning. Good stuff. So yeah, it's Monday morning, folks. Uh, last day of studycation for me. It's kind of sad. I wish I could just keep doing I wish I could do this every day, to be honest. I'm um, really enjoying it. Um, yesterday, I did not stream at all, though, because I just had to kind of chill. I did get some work done yesterday, but I just kind of took it easy. Uh, it's interesting, uh, Sunday mo Sunday a.m. I had, I slept really good Saturday night. Like I got 100% in my sleep app. But I was still kind of tired and I recognized, you know, I needed to back off a little bit. And so I took it easy. Um, but I'll show you in a minute where I, what I got done. Today though, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm ready to go. Um, yeah, upcoming target dates again by November 30th. Trying to finish units four, five, and six. Uh, let's go ahead and pull up the networklessons.com written course and where I'm at. So I'm basically on target. It, it took a good, you know, I wanted to finish IPv6 tunneling yesterday. I don't know what I just clicked. What did I just click there? Anyway, I can never figure that out. IPv6 tunneling. And man, I, I did I made some good progress there because I've got now on the on the big lab here is now replete with IPv6 tunnels. So I have a six to four tunnel working, I have six in four, I have six RD running here, routing. And I have Isotap. And I also have 6PE. So I got through all those labs. So the last thing I want to just check is 6PE because for each lab, for each IPv6 tunneling lab, I wanted to one, collect my samples, right? We're out here collecting uh, slides as it were. I don't know if you did that as a kid. I know as a kid in biology, we had to like go out to ponds and collect. So I collected my pack PCAPs and I now have PCAPs of all these bad boys, uh, IPv6 tunneling, my own PCAPs. And do I have the 6PE? Shoot. I may need to do a git pull to grab that. Let me do that real quick. Got about nine desktops open this morning, which is the way we like it. Uh, okay. Oh, that's right. I may not have PCAP those. Yes, I did. I most certainly did. Did it refresh? IPv6 tunneling, 6 and 4, 6 PE, here it is. So yeah, we got PCAPs of each of the tunnel types and uh, worked on this form here. 
Uh, the form is a spreadsheet I've been working on, and it's out there in um, on GitHub, but I've been able to effectively fill out all these details here, and on 6PE, one question I did not sort of work through is whether this supports multicast. And that's kind of where I well, that's kind of where I'm at right now. Before we move on to L2 VPNs, which is my goal for today, I would love to finish this today. And this section, get VPN. If I can finish all this today, my mission will be accomplished. And then that leaves just two more units left before the uh, before November 30th, the next two weeks. This might be a little ambitious, but uh, yeah, it's it's ambitious, but that's okay. We're gonna get through it. Um, so anyway, we got six PE going. I just want to check on that now and just booted up the lab. Lab is uh, now nice and fresh. So let's see if we can run a uh, IP protocol over this, maybe like EIGRP. We now have 56 devices running in this lab. Um, So I'm just going to boot up kind of where I was yesterday, which is this 6PE tunnel. So I'm going to make sure these routers are booted, the routers in the switch. Um, I'm not sure about the switch, if the switch config was saved, so I need to check that. Okay, looks like it was saved. That's good. So let's just make sure uh, 52 is our CE1 router. 53 is a PE1. 44 is a P router. And then 45 and 46 is a CE1 and PE1 and CE1. So let's go ahead and split off our topology tab. And do a little window organization here. So by the way, on this protocol, on this message type, Let's see what I've got captured here. So this is the BGP. This is a ping from, from one loop back to the other. And I think this capture was done at the PE router. Yeah, so essentially this ping comes in to the PE router and it's label switched. So there really is no, um, I mean, it is a tunneling technique, but there is no encapsulation per se, unless we want to call MPLS the encapsulation. So the protocol is MPLS here. Uh, on the tunnel interface itself, and this is what I've been doing is just reviewing each each of these fields so that I can distinguish one tunneling type from the other in clear terms. Unfortunately, for some reason, this image... Also, I'm going to be taking breaks today. Uh, I gotta watch my mental state, like my mental, uh, I mean, I'm crazy, I know that, but uh, <laughs> my mental state. I have to watch my level of fatigue, 
So six days is quite a bit. That's quite a little bit of a, a marathon. Mark Milo is in the house. Good morning. An earlier session. What a surprise. Yeah, man. I'm like, I didn't stream at all yesterday. So I kind of took the day off from streaming, um, which I rarely do on Sundays. I do that sometimes on, I always do, almost always do Friday night, but I stream Friday, all day Friday pretty much. Uh, Saturday, I did some streams. Quite, I did three streams on Saturday. And so Sunday, I was like, okay, I need to just chill. Watch my fake mental fatigue levels. Uh, I'm trying to get smarter about that. And, um, you know, the learning quotient here is the most important thing. The learning factor. Learning and memory retention. It's not our streaming. It's not, uh, I'm not working on endurance right now. I will be. But, uh, yeah, so I felt good this morning. I figured I'll stream, but I'm going to take frequent breaks today. Yeah, Dude For Him, you've been going solid, man. I know you, uh, you know, it's that Dude For Him and I are on that, you know, if you've ever run any length of distance, uh, any great lengths, um, the most I've run is a half marathon. Um you know, we're sort of in that, we're 50 days out. Uh, Duke for him is about 47, I think. And I'm at 50. And you're kind of at that pace where you're not really at your last burst. Like you're trying to save some energy for your last, you know, like burst, because that's where you really get ahead. Like if you're competing, we're not competing against anyone but ourselves, but, um, so you don't want to overdo it at this phase. I'm sure runners have a name for it, like real marathon runners. Um, but anyway, just come in to say good morning, ready to get some sleep. Oh, yeah, that's right. We'll have to catch a replay to find out how this ends. <laughs> some technology just hits you like a truck. Man, I got stuck yesterday, Mark Milo, on... I don't know why either, but I really got stuck on the 6RD. Well, maybe why? Because it's complicated, but I just had to keep thinking in my mind. Look, these are tunneling techniques. All these are tunneling because we wouldn't need these if everyone was already on native IPv6. If everyone was already on IPv6, these technologies, and as a matter of fact, these technologies, we hope one day will go away. You know, MPLS, well, it will because uh, this is MPLS with an IPv4 backbone. But I had to keep telling myself, yeah, this is, don't worry about, you know, how IPv6 itself is working. Worry about, you know, what is a particular sort of trick being done here to get this traffic over an IPv4 network, right? That's the whole point of IPv6 tunneling. Um, So yeah, I got stuck yesterday. That's kind of why I didn't stream much either because I thought, okay, I need to work this out of my head. I need to take it slow. But yeah, uh, I actually enjoy this though. I enjoy it because it's IPv6. I'm, I'm a total nerd out right now for IPv6, everything. So it's nice to start adding some uh, tunnels to the lab. So yeah, we are uh, currently looking at, so we're waiting on these adjacents to come up, unfortunately, with this image. Typically, and an even G for some reason, this stuff tends to come up in, with the interfaces being down. Uh, let's try to consolidate our desktops from seven to five. There we go. It's chat up here, and we got our topology here, so life is good. So yeah, working on now just filling out the information sheet on 6PE, and I want to see in particular, so I'm going to, I have some loopbacks here, and Are we running any 
Sorry about CC a classical war, but showed how to troubleshoot end-to-end -end BGP via MPLS with redistribution. He made it look so easy. I was like, wow, this isn't too bad. Then I tried it, it fell flat on my face. Oh, man. Well, if it's any consolation, dude, for him, anytime I spun up one of these MPLS clouds, I always spent way longer than I wanted to on troubleshooting a typo somewhere. Typically a typo would be uh, on the IGP side, like with OSPF, or it would be with uh, in a, in a, or a subnet. In an a, I mean, there's just so much that can go wrong. So yeah, I understand that. Um, so it doesn't look like I have any particular protocol running it. Well, I have BGP. But that is, I don't have any routing protocols running over the tunnel. So that's what I wanted to try because I didn't see any of that information in the lesson. Let me go back and look at the lesson, the introduction real quick and see if 6P supports route IGP routing protocols. Yeah, it does not say. I mean, if I thought we were watching Brian from INE work in BGP during his CCIE session. I know they make it look so easy. Okay, so as you all can see here, I have... I'm trying to make this text a little bigger. I have the gigabit... This is uh, this guy right here. I have the gigabit interface... And let's try to zoom in a little bit. There we go. Perfect. So this is a gigabit interface here that is on VLAN 997. And that is where we have our BGP peering with the PE router. But I have a loop back here, 2003 FFFC 52. And I want to see if I can form an adjacency doing a multicast. Yeah, I don't think I can. See, it's not really that type of tunnel. The tunnel really, the tunnel is through MPLS. Although there is a tunnel interface. No, there isn't. Yeah. That's the difference with uh, 6PE. So all these other technologies... No tunnel. No tunnel interface. Yeah. No tunnel interface. That is a big difference here. Um, you have the same... Okay, we got a new follower. Loxy487. Thank you for that follow. Appreciate it. Welcome to the Lantamber stream. Hope you enjoy some networking goodness. Uh, the MTU considerations are the same as MPLS, right? Well, let me take that back because IPv6 has a bigger header. So your MTU is going to be a little different than regular IPv4 MPLS. In fact, let's look at this packet. I thought I had it open. No. I hope everyone can hear the music and it's not too loud. Just let me know. All right, PCAPs. And this is RPV6 tunneling. These are all out on GitHub, by the way, folks. If you want to follow along or just you want a nice little dump of PCAPs, all mine are, 
or publicly available here. All right, where did it go? IP Vix Tony, six and four, six RD, six to four, Jerry, Isotap, six PE. You gotta be kidding me, I just did a get poll. Yeah. All right, date modify. Let's go by that. Okay, I don't get it. I did a git pull, and it brought in the 6PE PCAP. But I don't see it here. Oh, is that a copy? Shoot, that's the problem. Okay. I thought I created a um, a link. Yeah, for some reason in OS 10, you used to be able to create an alias with Command L, but they took away that uh, that key. And I don't know why. Cause I used to use it all the time to create an alias. There we go. All right. Okay. Yeah, so as we can see here, we have a regular... IPv6 ping. And this is the um, loopback, I believe. Yeah. Loopback to loopback. So just normal considerations for MPLS, MTU is all, really. Same as MPLS, yeah. Except six header larger than IPv4. So besides your normal uh, MPLS, MTU considerations, um, you have 20 bytes more because it's IPv6 than IPv4. Uh, use case, we have that. Advantages, it is dynamic tunneling. Dynamic tunneling, don't have to upgrade backbone. So that's the main thing, right? Is I don't have to upgrade my MPLS backbone to IPv6. All I have to do is have my PE routers have to be dual stack. So that's, that's a big advantage. Yeah. You may have to just upgrade some routers to be able to run dual stack, uh, depending on how old they are, I guess. So there we go. Uh, now we can move on to... I need to come back and fill this out. Oh, multicast IGPs. We haven't figured that out yet. Uh, so yeah, this should work just fine, right? Because um, what will happen, for example, is so this interface, if I send a um, multicast message, over this interface it will be transmitted it should be forwarded over the MPLS cloud well no it won't BGP won't do that so it's really like any other MPLS peering situation right I can peer with 
the PE router using a routing protocol. In this case, it's BGP over IPv6, which is not multicast, but I guess we'll get later to peering. Um, I think there's another lab here. IPv6, um, OSPF v3, yeah, your PV6 peering with the neighbor that way. So yeah, this is kind of this is a different animal. Yeah, in this case, you're peering with provider PE IGP peerings. That's the difference there. All right, let's let's move on. I think we can close out. And our IPv6 tunneling is complete, folks. That's a big milestone, and hopefully, uh, you know what we should do? Okay, that was my reminder to get up and move around so I don't hurt my back. Um, so anyway, I will be back in like five minutes and we will carry on here. Let's see if I can do my transitions.
Okay, we are back. And I'm going to update this uh, filter on the video capture device here. We've got a little background, got a little shadowing going on. I'm trying to avoid having to wear the bandana today. It's uh, trying not to run the fan because it seems to make it's coming through the audio. We'll see. Let's see what happens here. I don't want to get ghost face going. Green screen's not always really easy to work with. Great workout this morning, though. We did some uh, deadlifts and power cleans. It's rough. That's how you know you get your getting your money's worth, though, is if you're hurting the rest of the week. You're not hurting, you're not getting your money's worth. <laughs> uh. Alright, that looks... Uh, that's more or less. Anyway, folks, so what we're doing is wrapping up this... So this lab looks good. What I want to do is a little bit of... Um, review. So we're going to look at some flashcards now that we've so you know pretty much wrapping up IPv6 tunneling. And we're about to move to layer 2 tunnels. Um let's look at a few cards here. What are two main differences between 6RD and 6 to 4? I think I looked at this yesterday. One is basically the um the ability to control of global routing, right? I'm trying to think of what the other one is. Six RD and six to four. 6RD allows you to use multiple prefixes as well. True, 6RD does not require all 32 bits of IPv to be carried in the IPv6 payload header. Very true. Okay, not many questions on that one. Not many flashcards anyway. Now let's look at 6PE. Uh, 6VPE uses VRFs. What is the general premise of both 6PE and 6VPE? The general premise is that you can utilize your existing MPLS core network. You just need dual stack routers for the PE. Yeah. Hmm, not much there. There's These flashcards are great. They're not necessarily a reflection, of course, of uh, the level of detail you'll see on the exam, um, for sure. Especially on these IPv6 tunneling techniques. Okay, good little review there. Um, now let's get prepared for the next section, which is L2 VPN wireline. Adam. Any transport over MPLS. So 
So this is cool. When we say um, any atom, I want to take some notes on this. Uh, we might do this via Yeah, I don't want to get too detailed. Basically, anything we can think of layer two, like uh, Ethernet, frame relay, PPP, HDLC. And I think I do want to lab this. It shouldn't be too involved, but essentially we will use, I think what we'll do is we'll use this topology here. There's two routers I haven't used yet, and that's, yeah, so I'm going to, I'm going to hook these up to, I want to hook these into MPLS, use the same MPLS backbone. And I'm not sure how I'm going to diagram this, but um, hmm, I don't know. Yeah, doing this might break um, this tunnel, the six R or six PE. So that means we're gonna have to do a new MPLS cloud, which I'm fine with. So let's do that. Yeah, let's just make it all a brand new one. And we need to connect to... Yeah, we're gonna go all new here. I'm gonna need five routers, I think. Yeah. Actually, we may use this one as sort of the branch router. No, that won't work. Yeah, just some new stuff, new nodes. Just five new routers, that's all. This is gonna take us close to 60. that one hard to get to. Darn it. There we go. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll use um, do kind of this shape right here. Is that where we want to put it? Hold on a second. Yeah, this is kind of the area we need to grow out into right here. Then I'll probably just do a cursory connection between here and here. Yeah, let's do that. I want to keep everything connected and not get too crazy. Uh, should I circul circular align these? All right, so one thing about this layout, it gets very weird whenever you zoom in. 
or zoom out, I should say. Yeah, it starts to do this also. Uh, this actually works. Well, no, not really. If we did it the other way, let's see. See how it does that. No, it still insists. All right, it's okay. Don't want to mess with that anymore. So yeah, well, this will be the MPLS. And let's put it a little closer over here in case. Because I want to end up connecting this guy, EIGRP E6, over to this border router where he'll get his default route. Okay. All right, what I've learned too is that it's best to label first, uh, label your addresses before you boot everything up. So we're gonna add some little circles here, custom shape. Background doesn't matter. Something that's easy on the eyes. And we're gonna make this branch. Oh yeah, HQ. These renders are starting, starting to take a while, though, on this big lap. And I don't know if that's a limitation just as sort of a function of... I don't know. Do not do that, please. That was pretty disastrous. All right. That was kind of a disaster. All right, we'll fix it. Yeah, it's now wanting to align things like I don't know we're gonna just start manually handling these I do want these to come down though I want this to kind of line up that and this will line up here oh don't grab that thing up there that's what happens when you zoom out. Yeah, there's definitely some... Uh, I do have some sort of nickering little complaints about the user interface here. Uh, with large labs, this does get to be very cumbersome. Not very, but it does. it is somewhat cumbersome to manage. There's a lot of improvements that could be made. Okay. Let's 
So let's, this is going to be our, let's get our connections going. We're going to have a connection uh, here. Uh, what did it just do? Yeah, the way it renders this lab when you make a change, I don't know if it's like doing a full re-render. Seems like you could do a partial render. I'm not sure. Not sure how why this is so inefficient, but. Uh, we're gonna go GI01. GI00. And then it loads lab, please wait. Yeah, so however this is coded, I think this is just a programming issue, like a coding. It's definitely not a lack of resources. Eve devs, if you're listening, uh, take note. I'm gonna also post this in the uh, Or I could post this, I guess, on their site, like a enhancement request. Uh, zero one to zero zero. Yep. I know, I know I'm pushing the upper limits of this using the community version. Probably way beyond what's its intended use. These uh, links actually help us line things up too a little bit. Zero zero to zero zero, yes. And then we will connect this to this. Oh, can't do that, it's running. Shut it down. See the UI, like I, it's not even showing me my. You have to zoom out so far, it does. You can't see your notifications. Probably gonna think that that's where I'm probably thinking of me as a real pain in the butt. <laughs> All right, so that's linked. Is this linked or is it not linked? I think it's stuck. Let's do that. Configuration, uh, SP only has one customer that has an HQ and branch. So let's do some of this labeling. So they're, they want the HQ and the branch on the same layer two segment.
And first we'll use OSPF to advertise the loopback interfaces. These will be used as a router ID for MPLS IP. Okay, yeah, our basic MPLS stuff. So, HQ. I know it's weird that the branch would actually be connection to, connected to the uplink, but. This is the layout used in the networklessons.com. So, all right, so let's carve out, we need to carve out some address space. And okay, yeah, we need to put another tunnel thingamabobber. <laughs> uh, I've been using kind of these squares. Yeah, so let's just do a square here. Uh, it's dash three and we're gonna have a different color for L2 VPNs or L2 tunnels I uh, use purple for IP IPv6 Let's find let's do orange. How's that? I always like this jam here. This is a pretty decent jam. All right, nice little orange sherbet here. There we go. And this is going to be, we need to come up with a slash 24, I think. Yeah. Brain to send the front. So let's label this. Um, L two. L2 Atom Tunnel. Yeah, let's do that. And the font, we want to match kind of the color we're using here. A little bit darker though, yeah. Oh, it's kind of hard to read. I like that darker. I don't want it to look like OSPF though, or ISIS. All right, see, I've lost. Now I don't have my. You lose your prompts. Edit. That's supposed to pop up on the screen. It's a JavaScript void. Is this JavaScript? Really? Edit. JavaScript void zero. Alright, don't break on me now, lab. Oh, there it is. Gosh. Alright, see that's... There's some UI uh, work. Needed here for sure. All right, we need to make this darker, so let's go like that. Maybe? Yeah. All right, so now we need to come up with our IP schemes. And the last IPv4 I did was 10... 191. I've been trying to play with some very, like, weird... Or, not weird, but... Not often used subnets. So we'll go like a 10190.
Um, 10, 190. Uh, well, that's my thing to take a break. So be right back. Back break here.
I got some more coffee. Um, if I'm thinking about this right, I should actually be able to use switches here instead of routers. But, I don't know, we may just go with what we've got here. Alright, so 10.190. Uh, what's a mask I haven't played with yet? 10.190. Zero dot zero slash. Uh, let's go with eighteen. Yeah. Yeah, I should be able to put switches here, but we'll see. We, we may do that once the lab is done. Yeah, that'll be good. And on our internal. Yeah, what's interesting is the MPLS cloud should not care. If it's truly labeled two, we should be able to use the same subnet for our MPLS cloud. Let's do it just because we're sick and twisted individuals. So let's use a range that here that is inside. Yeah, let's do 10.190.0.0 slash. Um, 31. Why the heck not? And duplicate here. And we'll do this one. This one can be um, you know, if we're really disturbed, which we are, but I would put a switch here in the middle and connect kind of like I did over here, connect all the routers through the switch to do a layer two VPN. That would be sick and, yeah, anyway. I don't want to get too crazy. Um, all right, new circle. We need to indicate this, that this is actually a, an MPLS here. So this is gonna be dashed and three, and you know what I should do is just copy this. Just things this topology's gotten so big sometimes I'll do a right click copy or duplicate and not find it. This is cool though folks, I enjoy this because one is you know the CCIE is a grind. The CCIE written and the lab. Anything CCIE, it, it's a grind. And among things that helps keep me motivated is having little side projects like this. Even though it does take some time away from study, it doesn't take much. It's not robbing me of like a lot of time. Um, and it keeps me engaged, right? It keeps me, it's just fun. It's just fun to do. That's another reason I stream along with. Yes, yeah, streaming, it takes me a few minutes to get set up for streaming. But, and you know, I do engage with chat. I have those conversations, but all in all, it's, it's a side project that keeps me motivated on the main project, which is CCIE journey, right? So it's all for the good. That's the way I see it anyway. And you know what, just because we're um, um, low anal retentive, I am gonna go put ahead and put uh, PE, P and PE router labels here, even though it's gonna take an extra 15, 20 seconds. Uh, these need loopbacks, I believe. Yes, so the P router, all three need loopbacks, so we're gonna have to come up with loopback addresses also which is fine. All 
sorry, PE. You know, I should drag this out here. You think I have learned that by now? I think I'm ready for a new playlist, folks. I think this one's played out. Do our stream grooves playlist. Yeah. RPPE and oops, no, 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 don't do that. Uh, so our loopbacks, you know what, I've been, I've started to standardize the loopback labeling. I used to do really crazy things, but now I'm just doing L, the router number, and whether it's four or six. So I think we'll just stick with that. So this is PE router, PE router. And this is P router. I don't ever have to grab that again. Okay. Yeah, so loopbacks, we've got that set. We know what those need to be. Everything's labeled. I think we can fire up our routers now. Start selected. Let's do this. Yeah, I'll figure out some. These routers are just... Well, this router is doing something. This router is not. He's part of my star. I just made him there just to make him pretty. But we will uh, use this router for something at some point here. Did those start? Start router 59. Start this router... Yeah, they're starting up. Stop me up. Okay, he started good. Yeah. Let's just check in on our, while these things are booting up, let's just check in on our VM here. Uh, I've successfully used almost, well, yeah, 100 and about $110 worth this month so even not really trying to conserve I'm sort of trying to get use it all up um, I'm kind of, I'm still having trouble and I have five days left I think in my quota all right so these are booting up let's go over here to uh, let's see we'll go how are they listed here Branch HQ. So we'll go branch HQ, P, P, E1, P, E2. P, E2. P, E1. router um, HQ and branch I do not have full reachability in this lab by the way that will be one of my projects Whenever I'm ready for, you know, labbing, like generally at each of these connection points, like this is a lab, this is a lab, this is a lab. I do connect interfaces and I do sometimes do redistribution, but not necessarily always. So 
One day though, I will be coming back and getting full reachability with a default route to the Azure VNet. So that's not working right now, but uh, that's where this is going at some point. Move that up, that's bothering me. It bothers me. All right, so let's see, 50, let's go ahead and get ready to configure these bad boys. We're gonna break this off and move our terminals over here. We can close these terminals. Actually, I need to save these. I don't think I made any changes, but just in case. Kind of sad this uh, stay. You know, you're always sad when vacation ends, right? At least I am. I get a little uh, post or um, fourth quarter sadness when I approach the end of a of a vacation. Study or not, and man, I wish I could just keep doing this every day. Uh, maybe one day I will. <laughs> Wouldn't it be cool to have a job where all you do is create labs and learn protocols? Wouldn't that be awesome? That would be really cool, but I don't know that such a job exists. I do have a coworker who at one time worked for Cisco in the um, in the testing department. Um, but it was like very restrictive on the test environment and there were deadlines and it wasn't all that uh, he thought it was going to be cracked. It, it wasn't all he thought it was going to be, put it that way. And I don't think he was there very long just because it, the, it wasn't kind of what the expectation was that was set for, for the position. May have been, Cisco, may have been a Cisco um, services client. I think it may have been more something like that. All right, so we're going to configure host name. This is router 59. Um, all I'm going to do right now is do a no shut on that interface and on interface GI01, no shut. Uh, this is router 55. He is the HQ. Interface GI00, no shut. And now we're going to go to 57, which is a P router. Uh, R50 host name R57. And interface range GI0, 0 through 1, no shut. And we're going to go ahead and configure the IPs and we'll configure the loop back. Um, interface GI0, 0, 0, IP address. 10.190.0.0. Actually, this needs to be one. The um, lower order address always goes on the left or on top. So he's on the right of this link. Then. Um, interface GI01, IP address 10.190.0.2. And I really enjoyed doing IPv6 yesterday. Hope we hope I get to do some more of that today because help scratch my IPv6 itch a little bit. Uh, let's go to this PE router 56. Yeah, you do anytime. Like, I see these CPU hogs, but you'll notice that we did not really get over, over the last hour, that this is average, which 
I will say, um, you know what I'd like to do is uh, monitor via SSH. I want to do a little Linux level uh, monitoring of the utilization because this is just an average utilization, which I know the Linux one is too. They're all uh, statistical based, right? Um, they have to be to work. But I can get more granular for sure. Well, I can get more granular here too in Azure. You know what? I should turn on log analytics. Oh, I can add a chart too. I don't want to get too distracted here, but I do want, this is something that would be a benefit for my project here. Oh, you can do by CPU credits. That's cool. Yeah, let's add that one. Why not? A lot of these are data, network, OS disk. Percentage CPU. Yeah, quite a few metrics here, but again, this is going to be somewhat limited. Nice. Um, there, the some of the more really in-depth uh, monitoring you can do with log analytics. What is this preview product? They're always adding new stuff in Azure, which is cool. It's just okay. They don't allow me. Uh, my prescription, my subscription is not. Um, tied to this feature, this preview feature. Sometimes for previews, you have to sign up for them. Is this included? I've always wondered if the support plan is included. No, you have to purchase it separately. Um, resource health. Oh, what is this? Uh, oh yeah, it's trying to do a backup when the VM is down, which is fine. This is also a preview. Uh, virtual Machine Insights, interesting. Performance. There's so much stuff here. Oh, wait a second. Uh, now this is... This is interesting. Uh, CPU utilization 95th percentile. This is higher than expected. Average is 80.89. Now, I don't get that because... Maybe that's why it's got the slow... Oh, check this out. This is cool. I always like it when they have the little penguin. Oh, that's slick. Okay, so it's actually showing you process level. Yeah, there's going to be a bunch of Kimi wrappers here. That's for each VM, basically. Okay, I like that. I do like that. Uh, that was under... Insights. This is pretty slick.
Azure Media Database Ruby, huh? Oh, it's mapping these ports. Yeah, these are the different IPs that's been assigned. Pretty slick, I have to say. I want to take a screenshot of that full screen. Oh, recenter. Okay. Cool. Uh, now I need to follow up on this performance because this is not um, 15 minute granularity. Minimum. Oh, this is like your top, right? Top command. Let's let's take a look and see if this is what the VM is showing. The CPU average here is low, but you know, I, I just remember working with VMware. You would sometimes look at the uh, VMware tools, what it reported. <clears throat> It would sometimes say that a machine is running, you know, using very little memory, running low CPU utilization. But when you check the operating system level itself, like Windows statistics, it was a much different story. So that's what I want to check. Total free, plenty of memory free. Kimu, so these route, these all these individual routers. Yeah, this is telling a different story, isn't it? Okay, load average 31.9, 34. Okay, so that's about the same. What this is saying 34, 34, that's already 100. Am I not interpreting uh, the top correctly? It's been a while since I've done troubleshooting with this. Uh, I know what it's having in real time. It's... First row, top. The first line indicates in a corner time, uptime of the machine, user sessions logged, average load on the system. Last, five, last minute, five minutes and 15 minutes. This is much like a Cisco router. Show proc CPU. The second row gives the following information. Process run, processes running in totals. Processes running, sleeping, stopped. Third row CPU, okay. Third line indicates how the CPU is used. If you sum up all the percentage, the total will be 100%. Percentage of CPU for user processes, percentage of CPU for system. Not used. User for system is. This is over 100, I think. Wait, 22.5. So idle is 13.8. Yes, yeah, so we're using 22 plus 63 is 85, 86%.
Yeah, that is a much different story. Uh, W-A. Nobody's waiting. Service hardware interrupts is H-I, S-I is server software interrupts. Fourth and fifth row is memory usage. No, I think our memory is pretty good. Following row is processes list. So we have this line, for example, process ID, user, priority of the process, virtual memory used by the process, RES, shared memory of the process, S in the case that is process, sleep, running zombie. That's asleep. This is the percentage of the CPU used by this process. So we have a sleeping. Yeah, I don't know about all this, folks. A good alternative to the top is H top. Yeah, this doesn't make sense. Maybe this is a reporting issue. top yeah not installed all right I'm not gonna worry about it too much but these do these do not add up interesting okay so to me it's almost like this is a true I guess, like, is this taking into account all the CPUs? Because we have on this box, we have 16 CPUs. Oh, maybe that's why. So this is how much of an individual CPU is being used. Let's see. Uh, how do I show all the process IDs? I need to pull up my Linux. I have a really cool Linux zine by Julia Evans. Yeah, it's called Byte Size Linux. It's 10 bucks, folks. Definitely worth it. It's really good. Like, um, uh, let's see. Proc, every process on Linux. List of processors, memory maps. Proc ID status. Okay, that's, so that's for individual processes. Unix permission, system call, signals, pipes, sockets, Unix domain, processes. Processes. Let's look at that, page 12. It's cartoony, folks. Like uh, th these books, these zines, they're cartoony, but they're so simple, like uh, to follow. Threads, floating point, memory allocation, virtual memory. Okay, yeah, it doesn't really. Um, let's look at it in Excel real quick. Now I want uh, all of this.
Uh, why are you showing me in this color? I don't get it. Ah. Yes, code. Uh, what I could do is top. What's the way to do columns? Like I can uh, create columns and then remove. Let's do this uh, top rep root. Yeah, that's what I want. Well, uh, I'm getting down a rabbit hole a little bit, folks. Uh, bottom line is... I think our overall utilization on this lab is more than what we thought. So... Um, what we're going to have to do is just uh, monitor it via sort of user experience, right? All right, where were we? Basically, when we start getting a lot of these, we know we're in trouble. Uh, if we get them temporarily, it's fine. But also, I'll know if it's running slow. Like... The user experience changes. Uh, all right, R56. So let's go interface jazz01. IP address 10.190.0.0. And then interface range jazz0, 0, 0 through 1, no shut. And the other PE router is hostname R58. Interface range J0, 0 through 1, no shut. Interface J0, 0, 0, IP address 10.190.0.3. Uh, what do we do? IP address uh, 255, 254. So let's just verify basic uh, layer 2, layer 3 ping, 10.190.0.2. Works. And we'll go to another PE router and ping 10.190.0.1. Good. Don't know yet what I'm supposed to do on these interfaces, but we will see. Um, All right, carrying along with the configuration of the lab here. Uh, we need to do our, we'll do OSPF for routing in the MPLS cloud. So, oh, we need loopbacks. Interface L564, IP address 56. And interface L574. Interface L574. IP address 57. Interface L584. IP address. Uh, 58.58.58.58. Now we need to configure OSPF. And I've been messing around with OSPF, like... Instead of area zero, I've been trying to find other weird areas I can use. Uh, also the routing process, so... Router OSPF.
yeah that's fine on this one just router spf1 and then network 10.190.0.0001 area can we use a 127 here i bet we can <laughs> I love it. Network 10. Uh, let's see. Network 56. 56. Okay, and then router OSPF1. Network 10.190.0.0. And then network 10.190.0.2. And finally, network uh, the loopback 7.7.7.7. All right, we should get an adjacency now. Should get an, an adjacent. Say show CDP neighbor. Yeah. No neighbor yet. Interesting. Well, we'll keep rolling here. Um, router OSPF1, network 10.190.0.2. And then network 58.58.58.58. Show IP OSPF neighbor. Huh. Is it bad about something? Oh, this is router 55. It's router 55. Wrong router. Wrong router. No, I. No. Shoot. Uh, yeah, I don't have a command for that, Ch Chester. Sorry. Uh, what this is, is, um, it's called Trapped, and it's from YouTube. So if you go to the YouTube creator page, it has a bunch of music. I'll show you what I'm talking about. I should create a command for that. So down here where it has like uh, create, it has music that, that you can use for free. So, and no attribution is required. That's why I use it because I find the attribution is still kind of a pain. Like I do want to give people credit for their work. I don't want to use something not let someone get credit for it but at the same time um hey no problem no problem at all. no problemo uh 56 okay that's why this thing is 56 is here yeah this is all messed up uh no router ospf1 Network 10.190.0.0. 6. Uh, 
Oh, now we're loading. Okay, good. Um, so the P router might be correct. Yeah, he's good. Uh, 58. So this is a little different direction than, yeah. All right, that's fine. That's the thing, like, uh, this is how it's shown in the networkglasses.com lab. Like, this is the layout, pretty much. Um, but that's one of the challenges when you use all your own, like, router numbers and network numbers. It forces you to become... Uh, to not get so accustomed to one particular topology, right? That's another reason I'm doing this. I'm taking the extra time to do this stuff because it forces me to pay extra attention, which is really critical on the real lab, right? Um, you don't want to be making a lot of mistakes or losing a lot of time because of lack of attention to detail. Let me check 59. I still feel like I have a rogue OSPF configuration out here somewhere. Nope. Okay, that looks good. See, he has a loop back he shouldn't have. No interface L564. Yeah, okay, he looks good. Um, he 55, yeah, only one interface. 57 is P router. That's okay. Well, he should be learning loopbacks from OSPF right now. Yeah, see, his loopback is wrong. <laughs> No infrared cell 584. Interface L564. IP address. Okay. It's probably a problem over here too on 58. And he has no loop back, so. 584 IP address. Oh, okay, show run section OSPF. See, something like this costs you valuable time in a lab. Okay. Need to add our network here, 58, uh, 58, 58, 58. So you should now be advertising that, and let's check over here. Okay, that looks good, so come back to our P router. Have learned two loopbacks, which he has. Okay. Good. Okay. Uh, now we need to turn on MPLS on our interfaces. We're going to do it at the interface level here, apparently. So, interface range GI0, 0 through 1, IP, MPLS, or MPLS IP, sorry. MPLS IP. Interface GI01 and PLS IP, and then over here. Wait, wrong router again. No MPLS IP. Um, this is 56. These are the PE routers over here. And 58. Um, I'm going to do a new command here. 
I'm gonna make a note. Uh, the other question I get a lot on here I need a command for new nightbot command for cost and use it. yeah how much does it cost to run this in Azure and this VM is dollar six seven a minute um, or an hour <laughs> a minute that would be a lot. Um, but this is way bigger than what you normally will need for labbing. Way bigger. So this is kind of an indulgence as an experiment. You can run an Azure a lot cheaper than that. All right, let's check our neighbors. Won't you be my neighbor? Looks like, yep, both are up. Now we can configure uh, any transport over MPLS, Adam. So it looks like it's pretty simple, folks. It looks like it is pretty darn simple. And if that's the case, man, that's pretty cool. So it looks like there's a command you type here facing your CE router, right? So on PE1, We don't even need BGP, right? Because it's just layer two. I wonder how this scales though. That's where you get into wireline versus um, like VPLS versus a virtual private line service versus um, shoot, what is it called? I've got a chart on this too. And one of the next sections is actually, after tunneling, is Metro Ethernet. So, I thought I had a, okay, it might be just under, the drill sheet. Let's check the drill sheet. Oh, VPWS and VPLS, right. VPWS is E-Line, Virtual Private Wire Service, and VPLS is Virtual Private Line Service, which is E-LAN, right. Yeah, we've got no pseudo wires here as of yet, so. All right, so let's configure the, on the PE router, we're gonna do interface jazz zero zero. The command is uh, X connect. And the way this ties in, I guess, is um, who we're gonna peer with on the other PE router So in this case, it's gonna be 58, 58, 58, 58. Virtual circuit ID value, okay. So in this case, we're gonna call it, uh, oh, we can use all sorts of, so we're gonna say 55, 59. Site 55 to 59. Pseudo wire class, okay. Maybe this is a pseudo wire. In this case, we're gonna do encapsulation uh, in PLS, okay. L2 TPV3 or MPLS, boom. Nice, okay. It does create a pseudo wire, pseudo wire zero. And over here, I have never done a pseudo wire in the lab. First time for me, interface shows zero one. Uh, X connect, in this case, our peer is gonna be 56, 56, 56, 56. 
Um, I want to cap. I want to do a pcap here before we finish this config. And I want to capture mainly GI00. Yeah. Okay. Um, let's do this side too. Why not? And let's create two new windows here. One, two. This will be MPLS side traffic. This will be. And let's create a, one for all these little children windows. Just to get them out of the way. Because these. Uh, this Wireshark wrapper creates. Yeah, a lot of windows. All right. Uh, X Connect 5656. Uh, virtual circuit is, I guess this has to be the same number. We're going to make it the same number. And cap MPLS. Yes, it does have to be the same on both sides. Okay. Line protocol, pseudo wire changed up. Now let's look at our line protocol. Hmm, it doesn't create an, a normal interface. So three loop back. Yeah, interesting. We can do though on the P routers show MPLS L2 transport. Pseudo wire ID. Nice, okay. Peer address label. We even have our label here. Here's the binding, destination address. Oh, wow. Basically anything coming in, we're gonna forward it out to this destination over this virtual circuit ID. This is our local label. Our MTU is normal ethernet MTU, it looks like. Minus. Well, that would be uh, IP MTU, right? Minus Ethernet header, I assume. Um, okay. Oh, that's my little alarm, folks. I need to take a long, uh, back break. Be right back.
All right, folks, we're back. Uh, I'm gonna try to fix some of this lighting because it's starting to bother me here a little bit. I've got a light over on this side. Got a shadow somewhere. What is that from? Oh, that's the edge. That's why. Okay. We can fix that. Yeah, much better. Much better. Okay. All right, so, um, so far so good in the config. Now let's look at the lesson here. Yep, label assigned a virtual circuit says Ethernet. Yes, virtual circuit type is Ethernet in this case. And the other useful command show MPLS. Um, L2 transport VC. Status down. Uh, that should say up. All right, we have some issues here. So in this simple, um, let's go and configure our IP addresses. Maybe there's no traffic, maybe that's why. So router 55, we're gonna put an IP address on here, interface GI00. And I think we've cycled through all our songs, so let's go to another play playlist here. IP address 10.190.0.1.205.205.192.0. And the other is router 59. Interface GI00, IP address. 10.190. I want to make this the other extreme, so this will be um, in the 0 slash 18 network. Uh, that means we can go up to uh, their blocks of 64, so be 63.254. I believe that's right. Okay, show interface status. Ping 10.190.0.1. Yeah, our pseudo wire is not up. Oh, now it went up. Okay. Not on this side, though. What is the command? Show MPLS. Neighbor change. Do you still have some convergence in the network here? Show. Neighbor up. Interesting. That's because traffic was generated, I'm going to assume there. Show LDP neighbor.
Targeted hello. Oh, I wonder if I'm screwing it up by using um I mean theoretically it should encapsulate. Oh, it says up now. Okay. What's the command? Show show MPLS transport L2 up. Okay. Now does the ping work now? I want to ping from router 55 10.190.63.254 Hey, it works. Yes. Sweet. Nice. Okay. This is cool. It works. Yay. Um, you know what I want to do just for grins is I want to put over here. I want to go ahead and complete this EIGRP. Yeah, we're going to do it. We're going to do it. Because we can. So we should see. Let's look at our PCAPs. We gotta get it, you know, we gotta do our PCAPs, gotta get our captures. And what I wanna see on this side, so this is the LDP side of things. And this is how I'm forwarding the, I think. Yeah. All right, so we've got normal LDP, we've got OSPF, ICMP. We wanna hone in on these. Yeah, so this is the ping outbound, or no, reply. So ping request. Wow, look at all these, uh -huh. we get. Wow, so we've got, all right. Let's unpack this. We've got ICMP. Inside of IPv4, inside of Ethernet, inside of pseudowire, inside of MPLS, um, inside of MPLS. So, <laughs> uh, all right, so we got to take this into consideration, right? Because. Four bytes, four bytes. Oh, oh wait, four bytes, okay. This is only four bytes, and the only thing in here is a sequence number. Does that sequence number change? No. Let's mark this packet, mark this bad boy. And then this is a normal Ethernet, 14 bytes, 20 and yeah. So all in all, our headers are uh, Wow. Cool stuff, though. This is really slick. Okay, I told it to duplicate something. Did it? It duplicated this. That's fine. I wanted to duplicate that. And let's look on this side. So this is... Nice. By the time it is uh, de-encapsulated on the other side, it looks like a normal message. Nothing fancy here. Um, CDP. What does CDP show? This should be interesting. Um, yeah, check that out. Oh, wait. This is the 57. Not wrong one. 59. Wrong one.
Wow, check that out. Screenshot this. Yeah, man, it works. I love it. Show CDP neighbor detail. Modify this screenshot. Oh shoot, I want that to be... Oh, save. Right there. Like the new uh, OS X Mojave. screenshot feature done it's like snag it you know on the old windows all right so that finishes up that lab that's pretty simple um, yeah let me just finish the EIGRP config over here though Yeah, I want to put it right here. I need to clean it up. Uh, you know what? I'm, I'm going to leave that for now. We need to keep moving. Okay, any transport over MPLS, that lab is done. Uh, one of the command I wanna run here is on the PE router, show MPLS L2 transport VC detail. And here are VC statistics, receive Transmit packet totals, transmit byte, yeah, no drops. Signaling protocol is LDP. All right, now we're going to look at another uh, tunneling technology. L2TPV3. Say that 10 times fast without choking. Uh, yeah, this is going to be... Okay, cool. This is going to be different. You can tunnel protocols like Ethernet, Frame Relay, ATM over an IP network. Okay, I know exactly where to put this. All right, L2TPV3 is a separate protocol, right? But we're gonna do, let's, let's zoom in here. I think we should do this just right here. Well, actually in this, for this one, we need two hosts and two routers. Oh, that would be perfect to do right here, I think. Yep. 
Yeah, what we could do is, why don't we do um, L2T PV3 right here. And then we're going to link this here. Let's see. Or even simpler. What if I want to link him and have him be on the same subnet as when I need another router? In fact, let's just put two new routers here. You know what? We're going to make them look like PCs. Make them look like desktops are. Don't know where it's gonna drop it in on the lab. Let's see. L2 TPV3 is an IETF standard. It has a separate protocol number. Okay. Combine some technology from. Yeah. Look at that. Put it way over here. Nice little jam here, I like this jam. All right, where'd you put the other one? Thought I said two, but oh, you know, we need to clean up. Uh, we need to write changes. I'm gonna leave this in place since we're not gonna be working over here. need to save these configs. Where is the other router? Maybe I only made one? I'll find out in a second. That is an inside address here. That is a loop back. Uh, this would effectively be H60. Yeah, you know who you are. All right, these have saved. Now we need to do an export config on all these. This also is going to be very straightforward apparently. So those should be exported. Double lock the lab, that's fine. Good. We're making good progress. This is these are called the wire line. The 
the wireline tunneling, right? Adam and L2 TPV3. All right, come on, lab. What are you doing to me? Oh, I should close these. Yes, I need to close these off. Stop. Um, we want ICMP. Yeah, we got these marked. So this is, let's save this. Just to mark packets. And this is, um, L2 VPN wireline atom. Uh, where's the other one? This is not very interesting, right? CP. these out and free up a window and we're back uh, I wanted to have a hose up the lab now and it reached my limit <laughs> 60 routers Wow, we may have broken it. That's my goal. My goal is to break it. Nah, haven't broken it yet. Oh, there's the other one. Okay, so we're gonna line these two characters up. And we're going to put a, another one of these. I think we're going to rely on this terminal session to tell us a real story about the uh, lab. Oh, so we, we've had a waiting. Um, that's a WA.10. Okay, we're having some waiting here. 6327. So we got 64 plus 11. 7677. Wow, yeah, we're high, pretty high CPU utilization here. All right, we're gonna keep, we're gonna watch this versus the Azure stats because Azure's saying yeah I don't know I think this is more accurate all right so this guy his name is actually host Yeah, lab is definitely struggling right now. Man, I was hoping we could go more routers than this. Well, actually, the um, the automated VM project I'm working on has four more CPUs than this one. It's a 20 CPU. So we may be upgrading to that soon. Okay, yeah, let's put him here and him here. 
Or let's move him over just a little bit so we can... And let's stop this router. It's not doing anything anyway. And we're gonna move this here. And we're gonna call this... We're gonna use our orange. These are layer two. This is L2 TP V3. one don't we yep we do yeah we're gonna do like that Alright, that's my brake signal, folks. Um, yeah, I'll be right back and take a quick uh, neck break, stretch break, and then we'll be back on this and we'll hopefully finish this out before the lunch break begins. Right back. All right, we're back. All right, so let's move this guy up here. And make him longer. And put the little label on here. Okay. And we got our hosts. Let's connect our hosts. Those are going to be. Zero, zero. This means we have to configure something on the switch here, and that's fine. We just need to connect our hosts. Uh, let's go. Host is going to be Jezzer1. To G02. Yeah, what we may have to do, folks, is I'll probably keep working with this today. Um, but our wait times have increased on any of the changes to the lab, a noticeable increase. 
And we must be hitting the processors. We must be starting to tax, finally, uh, tax the system. So going forward, what we're probably going to need to do is get ready to provision the larger VM. All right, for this one, we're going to be Jezero 2, and it's going to connect to Jezero 1. What you get by achieving your goals is not as important as what you become by achieving your goals. I love it. Zig Ziglar, stay motivated, my man, and good bits. Thank you, mentors. Good to see you, my friend. Hope you're having a good uh, Monday morning. Still Monday morning. We've got about an hour left. Hope the fam is doing okay, and you're doing okay, and you're having some good health. The weather's looking nice. Show is going to be here. He was asking about the weather. He's like, it was some odd, like, really cold degrees where he's coming from. I'm like, no worries, mate. Uh, when I got when I hopped on the motorcycle at 5.50 a.m. this morning, it was 71 degrees. So he's going to be good to go here. That's why we love Florida, right? <laughs> That's why I love it. All right, we're going to do a, um, now I don't know a way to, we need a subnet to share here. So how can I do this? Because these are in a big diamond here. Um, all right, let's do this. Let's boot them up. Let's do that much. And let's get this switch configuration going here. I need to create a new VLAN for these guys. And they are also going to need a subnet to share. So the last VLAN we used was V1001.99. I think I skipped VLAN 1000. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna use VLAN 1000. That's a great quote. I like those inspirational quotes, uh, mentors. I used to, when I started uh, this job I have now, and I was in the office every day, I had a big whiteboard. And every day I would uh, try to come up with a new, at the top, I would put a new um, inspirational quotation up there. It's funny though, this weekend I read an op-ed, I think it was from, on the Packet Pushers. Uh, someone wrote an article about uh, hustle porn, which I thought was interesting. So, like I'm a big believer in hustle and inspiration of hustle and things like that. And I agree, some people do go overboard. But, you know, nowadays, everything they're turning into, like, porn. Same here. I've always had a motivational quote of the day to inspire me, mentors. Yeah, I mean, it's just... Whatever floats your boat, man. I mean, if, if like... Whatever keeps you motivated, I mean... It, I don't know if people are trying to say or claim that it's harmful. The motivation, motivational porn, but, I mean... People are quick to do that these days. They're quick to sort of classify something in the same area as like pornography. Um, something that A, people can become obsessed or let loose or have a lack of control about. Uh, I do agree with that in general, that, that there are a lot of things that, but that could be anything. That could be video games. That could be, um, that could be pictures of space. I mean, yeah, not porn. Yeah, there was a, um, let me see if I can find it. Uh, there was a, you know, I have not gone to their homepage lately. I tend to listen to the podcasts and I get the emails. Their emails are good. Oh, here we go. Go directly to news and blogs homepage. Yeah, it may not be on the blog page yet because it was in the uh, links. 
like in the email, the link propagation email. If I can find it. I learn something new every day. Nothing surprises me. I tell me about it, man. Tell me about it. Anyway, I, I like hustle. I like people that hustle. They inspire me. They keep me going. Um, I like to see pictures about it. I like to, when people post about it. It, it inspires me, right? Um, and looking at it uh, helps me. Uh, I agree that's probably not the case for everyone, and that's fine, right? Um, but... You know, don't be so quick to classify something in the same category as pornography. Uh, and all that comes with that, right? Yeah, I don't know where to put this label. I mean, some might call this lab porn. <laughs> oh, this is lab. That's the next article that's coming out. Someone's going to be criticizing and calling this stuff lab porn. Ten one ninety one. I think we need to drop to like the one eighty nine. To be honest, yeah, that works. Network topologies is my porn. Yes, <laughs> mine too, man. Man, this is going to be hard to squeeze in. I think. You know what we're gonna have to do, and this is fine. This is this is this is cool. Let's see, 90. Let's drop it back to like uh, 78. Yeah, we'll just do that on on each. Um, uh, I'm not good at estimating my angles here. But it's 67. Yeah, I knew it. I knew it. All right, we'll do that there. And we'll put another copy here. Because at some point, we're going to get lost. We're going to be looking for... Let's see if I can calculate my an angles. This should be negative... Um... It depends on which way we want to spin it, right? So let's go. That's probably the wrong answer, but. You know, everyone these days, they're, you know, and I understand it's, it's not easy to get, to get hits, to get attention. And your vlogs slash blog slash website, um, Okay, that, that should do it. All right, L2 TP, L2 TP V3 tunnel. And we can boot this guy up and we can boot the other guy up. I thought we'd done that. And we'll do a quick configuration. And let's check the switch. So this is gonna be VLAN 1000. So we're gonna do Jazz 00, wait. GI 1-3 and 0-3. Cool. And then interface GI 1-3. We'll do show run interface GI 1-3. Yeah, switch port access VLAN 1000. <clears throat> Curious, how much would you say you spend on your cloud hosting a month? Been thinking of hosting a lab in the cloud as well. Um, this one, so this one has cost me so far about $100 this month, but A, this is way too big of a machine than you need. So you could definitely run a lab for a lot less than that. And B, I have not been super conservative about running it. Like I'll take an hour break and leave it up. 
but that's because I have $150 credits to use. And I've just been curious. I've been experimenting this month for that very reason to see how much, you know, does it cost. And uh, so far I've got five days left and I've got like $40 left. So not even, of course, some of that is not related to this lab necessarily, but um, other labs I've been doing for work as well. Interesting. So uh, if I go back here, for example, yeah, five days left and cost by resource. So this machine has cost me like 86 bucks. The disc is $4. That's a different VM, other stuff. Forecast 156, no, nah, I won't even hit that. It's just because I've been labbing all day. I've been, I've been letting this thing run for like hours on end when I didn't really need to. So, all right, so let's do our configuration. Switch three, that should be good to go. We're gonna write that change. I tell you, it is competitive though, mentors, when you factor in, like generally to run a very large lab like this, you're either gonna need a big VM at home, a big machine at home. You need a rack rental. Like you need, uh, I actually have rack rental tokens with I and E, or we're gonna change this playlist too. It's getting a little, I think we've gone through it once. Um, and compared to those, it's actually very competitive, in my opinion. Uh, even the Cisco Cloud, um, the Cisco Expert Training. I'm going to put that, shoot, I don't know where to put you. I'll put you right here. Uh, compared to that, this is a good option. Thanks for sharing, my I need full labs are taking its toll on my hardware. Yeah. So that's that's another alternative, right? And I've all I've always planned for that. Like from the beginning, when I bought this Mac, I bought it knowing that I would be using it for small labs only. I did not spend what I could have spent on hardware at home because I thought, okay, I'm just gonna do this for small labs. But whenever I get to the full scale labs, like I know you're working on those mentors. Uh, the full-scale labs, I need 20, 20 routers plus, 20, 30 routers. I knew I was going to have to use um, a rack rental. So that's why I paid as part of my i &E package that I bought with the workbook I bought uh, tokens. Shoot, I may not ever use them. I don't know, but... Um, well, yeah... Um, now this is something you could do as an alternative to that. And you have full control over it versus uh, having to schedule. You know, you run it when you want to. You don't have to schedule lab time. The advantage to INE labs, of course, is they use real hardware, so. But I, as you can see, I've done pseudo wires. I've done all the switching labs in EVE. Pretty much, I think there's only maybe one feature that still doesn't work, and that's not that's not the software's issue. It's an issue with the image itself, right? But most of that's working. All right, two routers. We'll give it, okay, so that's configured. I did a save. We're gonna close this. We're gonna export the config. And then let's configure our interfaces here on both these routers. And let's go ahead and open our hosts up. These have not, I think all I've configured on those two routers is the host name. Okay, so this shared segment 
51 and 47. I'm gonna put him because he's really at the top. And we can separate these guys now. Move this over here. And move this over here. Make him smaller. CPU hog, that happens when you boot him up. Uh, interface H61, but as you can see, I mean, I don't have any delays really. Although I'm getting indications from the top command that we are, you know, Like we got 65 and 25, so that's 91. Yeah, not much waiting though. This is a key indicator, right? So, so far so good. Um, and H61, I need to see a little more of that, yeah. Interface J0 or configure terminal. Interface J01, no shut. And these actually need the IP configured, the shared. I need a label for that. Shoot. And we're gonna use um, yellow. I think I can add that here. What color is that? Tangerine, we'll use that. Tangerine. Tangerine dreams. And then let's duplicate this. See, this is what I'm encountering now after 60, how many devices? Uh, the redraws are probably the biggest slowdown right now, but they're very tolerable to me. I mean, when you think about it, look how many routers I'm running. All right, so this guy is gonna be, uh, we're gonna make up, you know what I like to do just for fun is to use the same subnet that we're using in the underlay. Uh, so this guy is 253. And we're going to make him 254 down below. And let's see, host, uh, are those loopbacks? No, that's going to be on the physical interfaces. So interface J01, IP address. And dot one eighty nine, yeah. Ten one eighty nine, two five, two five three. Yeah, put the um CIDR there just to show kind of that they're on the same subnet, right? Going through the tunnel. 10.29.205.253 and on 61 interface J01 IP address 10.189.205.254 and towards heads up going to share some free resources with Kevin Wallace and Hank Preston Land Tamer Community yeah man they have such good content, man. The, those folks are really putting out some good content. Um, I really like Kevin Wallace had a while back. I was struggling really bad with QoS. 
and he had some free videos out there on QoS that were a big help. I shared them, but he had like a three-part series on QoS that he had made available for free, which was cool. And I've watched a lot of Hank Preston videos on a Python and Python environments. Need to watch more. All right, so those interfaces are configured. Uh, we need to configure the interfaces between uh, router one and router two. So H47, no, 51 is at the top. So we're gonna have a shared segment, uh, interface jazz zero, zero, no shut, IP address, 10.189.255.253. Yep, that's right. Wait. Oh, I meant to use a 252, my bad. Um, IP address 10.189.255. 5.254 uh, Interface jazz zero, 0 no shut. Let's make sure we have connectivity ping 10.189.205.253 Good Okay, so Okay, sweet. This time we're going to create our pseudo wire class on our routers 51 and 47. So that's cool. I've never used this command. Pseudo wire class class name. We're going to call it R51 to R47. Capsulation, nice. MPLS, okay, we used a variant of this before, L2 TPv3. IP local interface. Uh, in this case, it's gonna be GI02. Yeah, I think on both routers. IP local interface J02. Oh, do I need an interface uh, IP address on there? Oh, okay. It has to be on the same. Oh, gotcha, gotcha. Slayer Darth, I like the name, man. Welcome to the t Slayer Darth. Yeah, welcome to the channel. Hope you enjoy some some uh, networking goodness. All right, we're gonna have to change this network because it looks like the um yeah these guys need an interface. Wow. Okay. Yeah, this, so this has to be a um, 29, which gives us eight bits, or eight, six usable hosts. And that is gonna be 10.29.255.248, right? Well, this, he'll be 249. You know what I should do is just do 248 here. Hey, we have a new subscriber, Ryder Deb. Thank you so much for that sub. I really appreciate that support. Um, and welcome, Ryder Dev. I uh, hope you enjoy the channel. Enjoy your new emote. We've got one emote so far. Um, yeah, tier one sub, Ryder Dev. That's awesome. Enjoy your uh, good bits. We don't want malformed bits, just good bits. Uh, which OS is the client running? Um, 
Oh, these are running, uh, they're actually running the routers, so Cisco iOS. My father's a networking manager, but he is idiot. Oh, man. I work as a full stack engineer at a web design agency. Nice. And then, yeah, Rider Dev, enjoy your, uh, enjoy your, your emotes then, your commercial free viewing of the channel. And thank you again so much for the support. Uh, always great support in the networking community. If you all uh, want to have some, like the real magic happens on the Discord. So there's my Discord link. If you folks are not yet in Discord and uh, subscribers get a special categorization in there as well. And yes, we are laughing at even G. I find it useful in my work to have a working knowledge of networking concepts. Yes, Lair Darth, not sure what you do, but um, if you know mentors, you might be in the secure IT security community. And I, to be honest, I've met a lot of security engineers who have that title. Uh, IT security, uh, SecOps, IT security analysts. And, you know, it's always best because I work with them a lot, right? Um, and um, the more knowledge they have about basic networking and routing protocols, the easier it is for us to work together. Uh, no, uh, sir, Def, I mean the command line interfaces you're passing commands to. Are they running a custom Linux distro or something? So these, this interface that I'm running, like right here, these are these four, uh, uh, routers, quote unquote, router VM instances, Kimu, Kimu uh, VM instances running in our lab software, and this is uh, Cisco iOS. So it does have some Linux-like features, which which work well. And there is there are actually um, I noticed when they boot, like it says GNU Linux. So. <laughs> I'm sure this is Linux underneath for the virtualization component in the real world that may not be running Linux, but there are a lot of versions of the Cisco device operating systems that are just running a variant of Linux. Uh, there's Cisco IOL, which is iOS, Cisco's operating system on Linux, and it works very well. Uh, the Nexus, which are is a data center uh, class uh, switches and routers, um, they have a very Unix or Linux-like interface. In fact, you do grep and all that on it. Uh, we must build WordPress and Laravel sites. Morning, morning. Hey, this plus that. Good morning. Hope you're having a good Monday morning. Um, yeah, you know, I saw an inspirational thing on a uh, conversation on Twitter yesterday. I used to blog some for Packet Pushers. I did that for a very short period of time. And I'm thinking about reinstating a blog. So if you have any, you know, um, I mean, I could host a web instance out of out of Azure, but I thought about just doing a WordPress site. So if you have any recommendations there, yeah, let me uh, let me know. Uh, you can also run multiple vendors as well in EVNG, such as Palo Alto, Juniper, etc. Yes, very good point, mentors. They're actually like if I add a node. You'll see a lot of the stuff that is supported here. Um, I have some of these images, like I have Cisco ASA. I just don't have it loaded. Of course, a lot of them are Cisco, but you have Dell, SonicWall, uh, F5. I need to get uh, F5 loaded in here just for Huawei, uh, Infoblox, iPad. That's cool. I didn't know they supported that. Uh, there are also some Docker images that you can run in here. You can run a Linux. Ostinato, I need I need to get that in here at some point. Riverbed, VMware, ESXi, Windows, Windows Server, Virtual PC, uh, and you can also load custom images. So even if they're not listed there, uh, there are ways to do that. Cloud automation here, beat you to it, Riverdev. <laughs> Cloud automation is here, fam. So sooner the better. Yeah, man. In fact, I wish I knew if there was an API for EVNG, because uh, as you may notice here, this lab is getting pretty darn big. I just keep adding on, like tacking on to it. Oh, that's Slayer Darth, yeah. So.
Uh, where's everybody from? What uh, time zones working in? I'm in Eastern, by the way, so uh, I'm probably going to be taking lunch after I finish this lab and then coming back in the afternoon. Central? Okay. Yeah, I'm going to definitely be coming back uh, in the afternoon and continuing on some of these layer two tunneling. All right, so we have to make this the same subnet. So I need to kind of turn this. Let's angle this at, what was it, 67? Yeah, so this turns out this has to be a shared segment. And this has to be a shared segment. So we had to make a bigger block. And edit. So we're doing layer two tunneling over IP. I'm getting ready in case you're new to the channel. Um, I'm actually preparing for the Cisco CCIE uh, routing and switching written exam on December 31st. This is a very difficult exam that I have already failed twice. Um, definitely come and hang out with us in the Land Tamper Discord. We have a great community. Always help to learn and share. Canada Eastern Time. Okay, same time zone. This plus that is definitely in there, man. He's uh, been a Land Tamper fan for a while and participant in the community. Also, this plus that has been putting out content. Uh, some pretty cool comment uh, content. This plus that and I share some we're part of a fan base of some of the uh, media creators out there on YouTube and Instagram, uh, namely uh, Gary V and um, some others. But these are some more streamers that I know about, and I've got their uh, links in there. Also, um, we have some... I have several repos in here where I put my notes, I put my packet captures. Later I'm going to put these, upload these labs. Um, I keep, um, I have a few study sheets and of course links like this are all up there. Uh, I'm also known as AKA Jack by the way, lol, <laughs> that's right. Mentor is well known in the community. Gary V just gets me going, I really like Tom Billy, you very inspiring as well. Oh really? Um, have I seen him? Uh, maybe I have. Okay, I think, in fact, I think I may have seen him. Quest Nutrition. Yeah, I don't want his channel to start playing and get a community strike. Yeah, I'm going to check him out. Thank you, this plus that. He does a show called Impact Theory, also on a request. Okay. Thanks for that, man. appreciate that. All right, so what's going to happen is, just for everyone here, this is a lab where um, we want host 60 and host 61 to act like they're on the same Ethernet segment. And the way we're going to do that is we are going to tunnel layer two through this fabric here, basically through these two routers and this switch. But this tunnel type is called uh, layer two tunneling protocol version three, L2TPV3. And this is part of the CCIE written exam. I know I've seen the name, Jack, just don't know it was on Twitter or Discord. So we've got our pseudo wire here. Actually, we need to back up and change these interfaces. Definitely Discord and multiple infosec community. Jack's all over the place, man. Jack is. Uh, how many exams is CCI yet? Two written? Two, yeah. One written and one lab exam. The written is Two hour uh, exam, 100 questions, very difficult. 
Uh, both exams have high failure rates. Nothing published officially, but... All right, so what we're gonna do on this segment, we're gonna make this... Uh, we'll just go to 249, uh, 249, 250, 251, 252, yeah. 10.109.205.249, 248, uh, 255.248, yeah. And we're going to change the upstream address, interface jazz 02, IP address. 10.189.205.250. What? Uh oh. Oh, shoot. It's not going to let me cheat. Uh, do you think Network Plus, Worthwhile Shirt, and uh, Support Tech waiting to expand? Yes, I failed written three times at Lab 1. Second attempt this gen. Yeah, he, Mentors has an attempt coming up. Going to get those numbers. Hoop! Yeah, Network Plus is a great exam to give you foundations. What that's going to... I've seen several people um, do this where they're at like a level one help desk and they wanted to get ahead so they took the Network Plus among others. And the Network Plus is really good because it forces you to learn some basic subnetting which is a key skill and you'd be you'd be surprised how many folks how far they get before they actually learn subnetting and then they realize oh man i need to go back and learn that um i think any basic technical support job you need to know ipv4 you know basic subnetting rules um yeah good point this plus that says network plus a good agnostic cert yes it's not vendor it's not any particular manufacturer. It's manufacturer independent, right? I mean, the people who give it, they, they are a vendor, but uh, yeah. Not necessarily Slayer Dart. Yeah. Guys, I've never taken it, so I can't really speak 100% on it. Some of you may have taken it and have a much better idea of it than I do for sure and I need to clean this up all right so we're this network is not gonna work I've tried to get cute so we'll just go with um, these are in eights so we're gonna go to the next subnet down which is gonna be 240 yeah this is gonna have to be 240 as well And maybe this time we'll get the IP scheme right here. Yeah, that's basically where I'm at. Doing basic remote support, realize I want more network knowledge. Man, networking is where it's at, I think. Like, uh, I could tell you, uh, Rider Dev, I've, my career has spanned a number of, it's always, I've been in IT since I was 18 or younger than that, since I was 16 and did a part-time job. And I've pretty much done almost the full spectrum in terms of infrastructure. So I've done desktop support, I've done help desk, I've done uh, server, uh, mostly enterprise, all right? I say that, but it's really mainly in the enterprise. Um, and I've done consulting, right? But it's always been for enterprises and desktop i've done server administration i've done active directory i've done linux i've done some security i've done security auditing uh, pen testing i've done um, uh, vulnerability scanning and reporting um, i've done forensics um, i've done vmware I've, i got a VC, uh, vcp a while back uh, but eventually I kept coming back to networking like I really want like that's it seems like the biggest challenges like the people who are more most expert 
are the networking folks. And so eventually I got into networking. Um, but times are changing, right? And Slayer Darth has a good point about that. Professor, Master Office Free Network Plus, Security Plus, and A Plus Cert Resources Community Study Groups. That's cool. Didn't know that. You can be a good front end developer without knowing much in the way of networking. That's true. Um, I know developing for the cloud, that is starting to change. I'm not a developer, but I work with developers. I'm on a cloud team now. Yeah, now I'm doing cloud. <laughs> um, and knowing like service fabric and API managers and things like that and load balancing becomes more important, right? And I would agree, Slayer Darth, about it being a modern, uh, very technical role. All free on YouTube. Okay, I do a little bit of everything in my job. Front-end development, back-end development, DevOps, sysadmin. So that's cool. I'm, the, I'm starting to do some DevOps as well, some Azure-related DevOps. Uh, templating some, you know, uh, CICD deployments of infrastructures, code, and things like that. Uh, this plus that, I can't get over the size of the topology. I don't have credits for GCP, but it seems so worth it. Yeah, this plus that, we were saying eventually when you get at least to, I know you're working on CCMP, but when you get to your CCIE studies, I did not mean to do that. Uh, you will not have, you have to do big labs, 20 routers plus, 20 to 30 routers. And granted, you can do that on a big box at home if you get a big enough box. Um, but at, that is a big expense, and it's not easy, of course, to you know keep that remote unless you have like a static IP and things like that. I mean, it's just so convenient. So you can either use a vendor um, who sells, you know. Rack rentals, you, you can, you can, they sell rack rental time, you can do that, or, you know, you can build it yourself, and it doesn't have to be Azure. Mine is in Azure because I happen to have free credits in Azure, but, you know, it can be, um, you can actually, like, DigitalOcean, uh, you can rent physical boxes if you want. Uh, so, yes, it is very convenient, and it's available from anywhere. Uh, network is something I always want to improve upon. I think it's a case of knuckling down. Yes, indeed. Uh, you're not going to learn networking by accident, put it that way, or by osmosis. You'll learn networking to a point by osmosis, but they're just concepts that um, you'll have to uh, have to study to learn. Uh, same here, jack of all trades, yet master of none. Lol. Agreed, I've seen a lack of strong network skills in the pen testing community. Why we need more purple teamers? Yes, agreed. And this is a great book, folks, that I read recently. It was recommended by my VP. He actually bought the book for me. Uh, the Quantum Age of IT. And it talks about the commoditization of what used to require expertise due to CICD, cloud, and um, software-defined networking, um, you know, APIs, and things like service fabric. So all that is, how do you offer service? You know, it's like the old days of voice. When voice, when analog uh, and digital voice systems moved to IP, a lot of people had to make a choice, you know, do I learn voice over IP and communication over, you know, IP networks or do I stay, you know, it's the same thing that comes up every few years. And this book is very good about uh, kind of talking about the new age of IT and how we're, we need to be uh, very diversified with, you know, we talk about, for example, software development. Does that mean that you need to know a little networking? Probably yes. Do you need to know a little cloud? Probably yes. Um, and if you're a networking engineer, do you need to know a little software development? 
yes, especially if you're automating your infrastructure's code, right? Prince, I use Fiddler. Yes, I, fi I use Fiddler as well. It's a proxy server so that I can browse to my local sites and mobile devices connected to the same network as my dev machine. Yes, Fiddler is a great tool for that. And you need to know about certs. You need to know about uh, HTTP protocol and SSL handshaking and all that. Makes it much easier to develop locally against mobile device without needing to deploy to live. Exactly. Thank you for that follow, Slayer Darth. Welcome to the Land Tamer, and feel free to, I think nowadays, Twitch, that when you click follow, I noticed, it turns on notifications by default. I could be wrong, but anyway, that's, that could be a good thing if you want to see notifications um, when I go live. That's a, that's a bigger deal on the weekends or when I'm on vacation, but generally my schedule is here. For any new to the channel, uh, I, I pretty much stick to that schedule. But weekends varies. Um, yes, show made a vid on Even G in the Cloud, aka Tony Tony E, another great streamer, and um, he did Even G in Google Cloud, which I think is a little cheaper if you if you're trying to just do a demo. Uh, it is definitely cheaper because uh, they give you more of a tr more trial credits than Azure does. Azure gives you two hundred dollars trial credits, but it's only good for like a month. Uh, Google, I think, gives you maybe a hundred or two hundred dollars, and it's for like two months. So yeah, you can definitely prove anything out, uh, POC it in, in either or. This plus that, I do a Kevin ESXi server using dot one q on sub-interface really gets annoying after a while. It's hard to see the topology. Um, interesting. Using dot one q and sub-interface to build topologies. Yeah, although I will say this plus that, um, you do need to be used to that for the um, CCIE one day because oftentimes the way they uh, get you uh, so in the config section of the CCIE practical lab exam an eight-hour exam what you're often asked to do is um, you have to use sub interfaces because you're gonna get a configuration that's why I did the star here because often they're gonna give you to test you out on layer two they're gonna ask, they're gonna put a switch in the middle of a bunch of routers. And then they're gonna tell you to configure uh, VLANs and configure trunks. And um, that's generally how they tend to test you out on the layer two stuff. So, which means you have to do sub interfaces here. Like I have several trunks here for MPLS. Um, and that's practical for a lot of reasons. One is it's easier to sort of, there's fewer cabling connections to manage overall, and it provides them an opportunity to introduce issues uh, at layer two and to test your layer two knowledge and layer three in the same topology. So yeah, that is a little more to manage, but you know, it doesn't hurt to make it a little harder on yourself right now uh, for, for the sake of the IE later. Uh, you can turn off push notifications globally. You can turn off push notifications globally. Oh yes, that's true on, in Twitch. Okay, then I'll get used to it again. Yeah, no problem, this plus that. Sorry, what is the name of your network simulation tool? Again, is it Cisco Packet Tracer? It is even G as he says there. Uh, they offer a free community edition, so that is the link to their site. Uh, GNS3 is free, even G.net is free. Typically what they don't have though is these router images. So if you want to simulate uh, network routers or Cisco routers and switches, 
uh, you'll need images. The only way to really obtain those um, is through like an employer, through like your employer, or you can purchase Viral, um, which is a Cisco product. It is a Cisco lab software product. And that's where I got these images. So, so they actually allow you to, now it's $200 a year, but you really only need the first year to obtain these images. And these are really good images. Um, they're memory, they're, they're kind of hogs, but they support like a lot of the features. Yeah. So if I do a show ver here, for example, um, uh, this is 15.6.1T VIOS is Cisco software, Cisco iOS V, so it's a virtual image. And yeah, you obtain it legally and it's, you can load it into GNS3, you can load it in Viral, you can load it in EVNG. And Viral is still, it's a good uh, labbing software as well. Um, now I'm really waiting on the newest version of Viral. The newest version of Viral that uh, is in development, which I saw at Cisco Live, looks like it might be really slick. Like it might automate uh, building out a lot of stuff. Networking geeks are cheap if you have already not configured out. Yep. Uh, Cisco Packet is available on some distros as well. Yep. All right, so continue our configuration here. Good stuff in the chat, guys. Glad to see folks in the chat. Always happy to help out, and people are always happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, also in the Discord, if you're not yet joined our Discord, check it out. All right, so this is gonna be H60. We're gonna have to re-IP. 10.189.255.241. Uh, now this will be, uh, yeah, we can't overlap. That's why we had to change it. That's right. And router 51, interface chat 02, IP address 10.189.255.241. And going over to router 47. High speed, low drag, fam. Stay motivated, lab every day. There you go. That's right. That's the thing. These days, back in the day, you know, I'm 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 a little long in the tooth compared to probably a lot of you folks. Um, and I remember preparing, preparing for CCNA with real gear, right? Nowadays, man, it's so easy to spin up VMs and start playing with networking for pretty cheap and without a lot of hassle. Um, so definitely get it. If you, if you don't have a network lab built yet, I encourage you to get one, even if it's on your local computer, just to start kicking the tires because that's how you really learn, right? And most anything. Uh, we're going to do these at the bottom end. So this will be uh, 245. And on host 61, it'll be 240. 10.19.25. 246. No shut. Yeah, you're definitely old, my man. Haha, <laughs> 27 here. Uh huh, 27. Yeah. 27 years young at heart, right? If you're 27, Jack, I am uh, 18. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, definitely, definitely uh, plus 20. <laughs> I can buy beer legally. 
All right, so let's make sure we have our basic connectivity here. Uh, we are on router 51, ping 10.189.205.241. Good. And let's check router 47, ping 10.189.205.246. Uh oh, no ping here. Let's see what's going on. Show IP interface brief. Ten at one two five two five four ten at one nine. Oh, the interface is down. Okay, we're good there. So now we have our basic uh, IP connectivity. I think it's now time to build our pseudo wires. So on router 51, uh, pseudo wire, I already have a pseudo wire class, R51, R47. Is that what I call it? Show run section of pseudo wire. Yeah, pseudo wire class R51, R47. Okay, IP local interface is J02. Okay, that worked this time. Good. So now over here. Uh, pseudo wire. Class R, I think that this does have to be the same label. In cap L2 TP V3, that's always a challenge to remember or say. IP local interface Jazz02, pretty straightforward as well. Now we need to bind the pseudo wire to the interface where we want to bridge the L2 traffic. So that's the facing this way. This is the interface that's going to act as a bridge, a layer 2 bridge. So that's where we do our binding. This is done with XConnect. So starting at the top, interface Jazz 0, 0. And X connect. I guess that's short for cross connect. That's got to be. I'm thinking X connect, and then I'm like, ah, cross connect makes sense. Uh, cross connect, and this has to be the the destination address, the other end of the pseudo wire bridge. <clears throat> So in that case, it's going to be 10.189.205.254. And the pseudo wire class is the one we created, R51 underscore R47. Uh-oh. Oh, VC ID value. This is a little... Oh, that's right. That's right. Uh, this has to be the same. We're going to make it 5147. I'm assuming this is case sensitive, so. Oh, PW class. Okay, it looks like that ran over here. Uh, what did it say? Okay, it created a uh, interface, pseudo wire zero. Change state to up. So interface jazz 2 uh, cross connect. And that's the other end. Uh, you guys fans of secure CRT or solar putty? I'm a traditional putty guy myself. Have not used solar putty. Uh, I like secure CRT myself. Um, that's just what I use at work though. 
uh, VC value is 5147. PW class is R51 underscore R47. Downwind 401, how are you doing? I use solo party work because work doesn't want to pay for secure CRT. Yeah, we have... I have a paid license. Like, we had a, a licenses purchased... They've not, it has not been updated in a while, I will say, like, uh, I'm probably a few versions behind, but it works. I wonder if Solar Putty has the feature where you can create a shared command window. Let's say you open 20 routers and you type in, you know, write mem, and it'll send that to all the routers. I wonder if Solar Putty has that because that is a killer feature. All right, so we're almost done. We should now be able to ping from H61 all the way to H60 using the same on the same subnet. Uh, it doesn't. That would be nice. Yeah, that's 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 why SecureCRT has paid, right? Uh, I was watching Duan's last video on Secure Street, and they have come a long way. Wow, I was curious. Okay. 10.189.205.241. Hmm, no ping yet. Let me try from the other end. Wait a second. H60. What did it say about GS02? Did I bring up the wrong interface? Interface GS02 state changed to up. Oh, I brought it up. Well, it doesn't matter. 10. Show the CDP. Let me make sure though. Okay, router 51 is there. Ping 10.189.25.242. Okay, that's good. Uh oh. Oh, alright, that's why. It says pseudo wire. Cross-connect configuration on the circuit is incomplete. Show run section pseudo wire. That's the thing though is according to this. Did I not hit enter on that? Uh, let me check the configuration here, folks. Down at the bottom of the lesson, it has like the final. Oh, wait a second. This says. Show run interface J02. Oh, I think I know the problem. It's not supposed to have this interface configured. But on the pseudo wire, that's basically where you define what interface it's gonna use. So, um, interface J02, cross connect 10.189.205.242. In cap. Hmm. Cross connect. Ten point 
the peer Oh, right, right, right. Okay. All right, wait a second here. I don't need an IP address on there. Okay, so GI01 is towards our peer. GI02, which is 10.29.255. Dot. This is him. Two five three. Oh, I just put the, okay, got it. Okay, this value is 5147. PW class is R51 underscore R47. Interesting. Make sure pseudo wire class is configured and valid. Unconfigured IP local interface. That should be correct. What? Show run interface J02. Think, oh, check this out. It's like. Wow, that is not here in this lab. Yeah, there is no IP interface configured on this. Uh, let's see, for you newcomers, definitely check out David Bomble vids and his Udemy courses, great resource studies in your search journey. Agreed, very affordable as well. What I want to get into is electronics, but I'm scared that I'll, it'll cost quite a bit for a decent setup to get started. Uh, a lot of kits out there, though. Might attend one of those hacker spaces. Hacking electronics, that sounds like fun, for sure. All right, folks, what I might do, this is a good time. You ever get to a lab or a situation at work where you spend a little time on it, you think you've got it configured right, but things aren't working right, Sometimes it's best just to step away and then come back and or get a peer review. So get someone to come, no set of eyes, look over your shoulder, check it out. Um, that's kind of where I'm at on this. So we may be looking at an issue with compatibility of this configuration in the image, but we'll check that out in a minute. I think there's a good time for a lunch break for myself. A uh, little hungry, had a tense workout this morning, so. I just want to thank all the support in the stream uh, here on Twitch and welcome the new folks and definitely sign up for Discord if you haven't already. You can also follow me on Twitter, Instagram, um, as I mentioned, Discord and YouTube. I upload all the labs and my vlogs, my daily vlogs. I upload them all to YouTube. So if you look for a specific subject, you can search on there. Uh, definitely give me a sub, you know, you can sub, sub there to see new content. I do have some unique videos too to YouTube that are not just streams, um, some how-tos, things like that. So feel free to check those out. Thanks for stopping by. I'll probably be back around 1.30 or 2 Eastern to continue knocking out these Layer 2 tunneling labs. So, uh, oh nice, can I DM you with some questions? Awesome, my friend. I'm an electrical engineer as well. I didn't know that, Mentor. Mentors is, y'all, Mentors knows a little about everything i'm telling you he is uh had his hands in all sorts of cool technical stuff 
So, great resource. Thanks for helping out, mentors. Um, I'll be online in about five minutes. Okay, sure, thanks. All right, folks. Thanks so much. Great chats. Um, we'll see you back here in a little while here on the Land Tamer stream. Have a great lunch. All right, folks, welcome back to the Land Tamer stream. We are doing an afternoon session of labbing. Here's some uh, layer two tunneling protocol uh, labs. So looking forward to that. <clears throat> Got a couple new commands set up right before stream. So we can do now cost. I was off actually. The VM I'm using now is 76 cents an hour. The one I want to use, which is uh, 20 vCPUs, 128 gig of RAM. Uh, that one is like $1.76, so this is actually cheaper than, than I was advertised earlier. Um, so that's some good news, I guess. Uh, this VM's uh, working okay. It's, it's handling itself. It's doing okay. But let's uh, just reset a little bit. Where I was uh, prior to lunch is working on the Layer 2 tunneling configurations in networklessons.com. Let me make sure I have that up. I may have closed. No, it's over here. So I have the lesson up over here and I've essentially finished it, but uh, it's not working. And I think it's a difference in configurations based on the image I'm using. So we're going to just play with that a minute and make sure that everything is configured the way it needs to be. And then we're going to move on to Metro Ethernet, which I'm not sure if there's any labs there. We'll, we'll have to see. So that's where we're at. Uh, let's see, do I need any other windows up here? Okay, we've got a few people joining the Discord, which is great. But let's get to it. Yeah, I've learned to pace out. Uh, I've learned to pace out my breaks here. This is the last day. I'm kind of sad. Last day of a six-day studycation. I've made a lot of progress. VPN technologies is probably my weakest, and now I would say that uh, I rate myself a good bit better. Actually, let's start with some review by way of. Uh, Jedediah Casey's flashcard set. And you know what I need to do is I need to to give due credit. I'm, I'm, I'll be meeting Jedediah tomorrow, actually. Uh, we've got a little meetup here in the Orlando area. And I've always wanted to meet him. And I knew he was here uh, in this area anyway. But let me find his flashcards. I need to make a command for that because... I've just searched for it a number of times, and this is the flashcard deck. Uh, you know, so far I don't like when you do that. I do want you to just show me the URL. There we go. So yeah, this is the flashcard deck that we're using, and it's there's multiple formats here, of course. I went ahead and downloaded the original Anki package. So let's uh, pull up Nightbot and add this as a command since I'm on that. Chat command, so important. You don't think it's a big deal until you're on Twitch for a little while and then you're like, yeah, this is important. card set you know what I should make a bitly for this because it's kind of long yeah there 
けやな Good. So now if you type in flashcards, yeah, right here. Flashcard set is right here. So that's what we're going to use. Just do a little bit of review. I like to review this、uh, at the coming to the end of the section. May not have any for this. L2TP, L2, yeah, I don't see any. Pseudowire. Oh, here's some. There are eight cards. What are the two Ethernet pseudowire modes?、Um, that would be MPLS and pseudowire class. Oh, raw mode and tag mode. Hmm. Interesting. Oh, Ethernet. Ethernet. Pseudowire modes. Let's look at the RFC for that. Ethernet raw mode versus tag mode. When the PE receives an Ethernet frame and the frame has a VLAN tag, we can distinguish two cases. The tag is service delimiting. This means that the tag was placed on the frame by some piece of SP operated equipment. The tag is used by a service provider to distinguish the traffic. For example, LANs from different customers might be attached to the same service provider switch. Okay. Or the tag is not service delimiting. This means that the tag was placed in the frame by a piece of customer equipment. Banner, M O T D, how are you? Good afternoon. Good Monday afternoon. Hope your Monday's going well. If an Ethernet, we're learning about pseudo wires here. If an Ethernet pseudo wire is operating in raw mode, service delimiting tags are never sent over the pseudo wire. If a service delimiting tag is present when the frame is received from the attachment circuit by the PE, it must be stripped from the frame before the frame is sent to the pseudo wire. Interesting. If an Ethernet pseudo wire is operating in tag mode, every frame sent on the pseudo wire must have a service delimiting tag. Ah, it's either one or the other. If the frame as received by the PE from the attachment circuit does not have a service detailing, delimiting VLAN tag, the PE must pre pin the frame with a dummy VLAN tag. This is the default operating mode. This is the only required mode. Yeah, man, flashcards. These are good flashcards. In both modes, non service delimiting tags are passed transparently across pseudo wires as part of the payload. Ah, okay. It should be noted that a single Ethernet packet may get to pay more than one tag. That is true. At most, one of these tags may be service delimiting. In any case, the NSP function may only inspect the outermost tag. For the purpose of adding the frame to the pseudo wire. In both modes, the service delimiting tag values have only local significance. When tag mode is used, the PE that receives a frame may rewrite the tag value or may strip the tag entirely or may leave the tag unchanged. When raw mode is used, the PE that receives a frame may or may not need to add. Okay, this is a good table here, I think. Uh, tag service delimiting. Raw mode, first VLAN tag removed. Non service delimiting, raw mode, no operation performed. A tag is added. Okay. Interesting. So the VLAN tag goes on the Ethernet frame. So, how do you know, I guess? Ethernet tag mode. Ethernet frame will be encapsulated according to the procedures defined later in this time for tag mode. It should be noted that if the VLAN identifier is modified by the eGRSPE, 
The Ethernet, oh uh, yeah. This issue is of significance. The VLAN identifier must be selected in such a way that it matches on the attachment circuits at both ends. If the P detects a failure or the port is administratively disabled, it must send a pseudo wire status note for all the pseudo wires attached with the port. This mode uses service delimiting tags to map input Ethernet frames to respective pseudo wires. Okay. That is tag mode, yeah. Raw mode, the Ethernet frame may encapsulate according to the procedures defined. If the P detects a failure, the P must send an appropriate pseudo wire status notification message. I wonder what that looks like. I'd like to capture that. So let's go to our routers here and shut down a port. And just see what happens. Like, does it send a pseudo wire notification? It should, I guess. So this would be on port. Little window management here. Close that. Get that open. I want to put this link. Uh, I need to open my agendas because agendas serves two purposes. The agendas is to help me think beforehand what I'm going to do on stream, what I'm going to do for the day or the evening, and it also helps later when I don't want to search for links important links that I don't remember. So I'm going to add this as a meat chunk. Uh, Pseudowire RFC. Uh, we'll save this bad boy. Save and push. Edit. Commit and push. And I probably should leave this open. I try to keep, I keep too many windows open. Okay, so let's, uh, I wanna see this notification. Um, so we'll wanna do a PCAP on this router here because I'm assuming what will happen is Let's say this interface goes down, it should send a pseudo wire notification this way. That's my theory anyway. Yeah, this is something very new to me, pseudo wires. First time I've ever configured them in a lab. But I know some people like this is like all they work on is uh, these layer two circuits I like to bunch all it it generates a bunch of these uh, windows the wrapper does all right so this is running good good I'm not even sure what the pseudo wire acknowledgement will look like and if it's supported on Cisco but we'll see so let's go to router 47 And let's just shut down. Spanning tree, DTP, that's all we're seeing here, really. Okay, not much going on here. Kind of acting like nothing really happened. Oh, hold on. Yeah, just CDP. All right, so let's bring it back up. Do we need traffic? Sometimes I wonder about that. Like, oh, this is not the pseudo wire is not even working yet. Let's get it working first. 
All right, so I'm going to look at this configuration in the lab here. This is networklessons.com, not my lab, folks. I've just modified it. Um, if you want to see these, do these, definitely check out the uh, networklessons.com deals um, or subscription that they have, that they offer. It's pretty awesome. All right, this is host two. The only thing host two needs. is he needs an interface yep and an IP assigned to it which it is uh, same for host one that's all we need here the real magic happens at the provide on the PE router right okay this should be reachable I mean, the address range should be correct. So if we think 10.199.255.241, let's just check just to be sure. I, I wish I could be more confident in my own uh, subnetting sometimes. That's why I'm using these weird sort of obtuse, uh, for lack of a better term, uh, subnet masks and things like that. So 248, that's gonna be a slash 30. Oh, no, not... Sorry. That is a... Oh, you know what? 252. Yeah, this is slash 29. All right, so first usable host is 41. And last usable host is 246. Yeah, that's what we have. So we're on the same segment. Let's verify that just for sanity purposes. Now let's look at our PE routers. Um, show run interface GI0. Zero, zero. Now all this needs on the interface is the now the interface facing the other PE router only needs an IP address that's probably the issue yeah it doesn't okay Jazzer zero Okay, that's part of the problem. Thing is, I'm looking at this lab and the lab is using different uh, subnet scheme, obviously. Uh, so let's do this. Let's just default interface jazz zero zero. And all we need here is uh, the IP address. IP address 10.189.255.253. That's all I need here. So I should be able to ping. Well, we'll check the other router in a second. So that's GI00. That is facing. The other end, the other PE router. Now the other I, the other interface should have our pseudo wire configuration and no IP address. So it should have no IP address, and then the and then the cross connect command. Right, and that's saying the other end is. Five, three. I should be able to ping that. And I can, yeah. So incomplete or invalid cross connect config 10 189 255 5147. Yeah, I think it says the same thing on the other side. So um, show run begin pseudo wire. Uh, 
Unconfigured IP local interface. Okay. See, it almost like it wants sudo our class r51 underscore 47 encapsulation l2tpv3 layer 2 tunneling protocol v3 that's almost easier to say than l2tpv3 layer layer 2 tunneling protocol v3 l2 CPV3. <laughs> Alright, IP local interface. Now, I may have the wrong interface here. Ah, uh, pointing it to the wrong one. That's the problem. Okay. <laughs> I know some of these acronyms, man, it should trip me up. They're a mouthful, class, pseudo. All right, now how can we shorten this? Ooh, PS, that's all we need. So good, that's another word I'm not gonna have to learn to spell right. Although I know how to spell pseudo, but. Uh, pseudo R class R51 underscore R47. In cap. And there are only two types here that are, no, three, sorry. So L2, layer two, TPV3. No other options there. And then IP local interface. Okay, so... Let me check this topology real quick. In the lab. I think this part is public. Yeah, you know how you go to network lessons and you can see the first part of the page and then it says you have to log in to view the rest. So I think I'm okay here. But yeah, these are completely different subnets. 12.1, 12.2, 1.101, 1 1.102. Yeah, completely different. Okay, just making sure. So what we want here is lo IP local interface. I mean, the command doesn't really make a lot of sense to me unless... This is the interface that will do the in-cap, decap, I guess. Which will be GI00. Local interface changes are not, oh my gosh. All kinds of, uh, this, is, this is like one of those golf courses you go out to and there's all these rules and you feel kind of intimidated. Like some public courses you go out to and they don't care, you know, where you where you drop off your bag. Others are like, eh. they're strict about like what kind of shirt you wear. I guess this is good because a lot of protocols in the parser will just let you do whatever the hell you want, even though it's completely wrong. I guess this is better. Local interfaces are not allowed on LTP pseudo-wire class with cross connects. Now, is that just a warning, or did it actually take the command? Is there a show run section? So, I guess it's better you know how to spell it anyway, because you might need it on a show run. Okay, that works. Incomplete config. So it it took the configuration. Okay, let me just double check this real quick. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna get granular here. Where's my Visual Studio code? All right, so this is from the the uh, lesson.
All right, folks, that's my stand up signal. Stand up real quick. Go anywhere. Oh, show IP. The Eagle has landed. Yes, sir. The astronaut of networks is here. Show IP interface brief. The first man. And he has arrived in Florida. So that is awesome, dude. How do you like this weather, eh? A little bit of an improvement, I'm sure. It's nice, man. I actually did, I went to lunch. I didn't walk outside. Um, and I'm just about to take like a two minute break. I'll be right back, show. I'm glad you made it safe. No major incidents at the airport. And uh, get settled in, bud. Yes, very warm here. I, I love it. And I'll be back in just a moment, folks. And we're back. Uh, you go that warm here. Hey, I dig the background. Do you know? Oh yeah, this one is. So this is a new. These are trippy, man. These are like the new um, wallpapers that came with OS 10 Mojave. And let me see if it'll. Yeah, look at it, man. It's pretty slick. Right now, the new one, and it rotates like every 30 minutes or so. So, this one's been on for a while. It's pretty trippy. Woo, when I do that, it's like. <laughs> Not that I would know what those kind of trips are, I'm just saying. Uh, man, I know. Uh... Oh, the background music. Yeah. Oh, you like that? I hope it's not too loud, but. Yeah, I even have a new command. Oi. New Nightbot command, where the music comes from. And also, uh, so I have like four uh, playlists now. So yeah, you know, get, get, get a little bling, a little more bling here. Very much like an 80s porno. <laughs> I love it, man. I love it. That's the vibe we want to uh, emulate here, you know? <laughs> uh, welcome to our Boogie Nights uh, labbing stream. Yeah, that would get some viewers, huh? Start uh, putting... In... Well, I get banned from Twitch, but... Put some kind of racy uh, little dancers here in the background. All right, all right. So we've got pseudo wire business here, and from what I can tell, all I need is a pseudo wire class, encapsulation, IP local interface GI01. This is router one, right? Interface GI01 has an IP address. Uh, Jazz02 has no IP address and has a cross connect. And the cross connect command uh, destination is the other end of the PE facing link. 
that's what I have. That is exactly what I have. And it's not happy. So one thing I th can think of is let's just... Um, let's just reconfigure. Like take it out and put it back in. Either that or we're going to need to go to the iOS uh, configuration guide for this operating system. Hey, no problem, man. Enjoy that uh, Orlando Wi-Fi. So I'm just going to take it out. No pseudo wire. Okay, I have to type R51, R47. Okay, we're just taking it off. Uh, your topology is awesome. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. It's uh, it's growing. I think we're going to have to move to a bigger VM. I don't know, because um, I know a lot of these colors are, is it a boy or is it a girl? I know, but the these colors are easiest on the eyes, I think. Uh, but yeah, it's just um, starting to few, see a few little issues here, but it may be... You know, I'm trying to read like what Azure says the CPU utilization is and what the operating system and the operating system seems to be showing that it's... Uh, yeah, it's, it's really big banner. You haven't seen it. We are at 60... How many routers we have? I'll show you all because I need to check something anyway. This is the whole thing. Yeah, I wanted to turn these on. That's yeah, all. 61 uh, routers and three switches. You yeah, haven't saved these yet, that's why it does that. And we're cruising. The only thing is, the only uh, drawback right now is that when you uh, add an element to the topology, the even G server like redraws each time, like recalculates and redraws the entire topology file, I think. Um, I just want to do a multi-tier ISP design down the road. Well, what this is going to be useful for is one, is I'm gonna really screw up this lab at some point and give it to, to show to like fix when we start exchanging labs. So the, I'm gonna be sending him this lab from hell. But the other thing is it lets you, anytime you wanna reference a technology or a set of commands, is you can easily bounce into a router and look at your ISIS. Or you can easily bounce into a six and four tunnel. As long as you can find it on here. <laughs> And you'll be able to use it as a reference, you know, or test different interactions of routing protocols, for example. So I think I think there are practical reasons for, for having it. Uh, you can't wait. I'm rubbing my hands together, warming them up. Yeah, buddy, get ready. I don't have full reachability in here yet. Um, I haven't really spent the time to do that. Um, but at some point I will. I'll do some redistribution and a default route. Hopefully default route will be into the Azure cloud. But yeah, we'll, we'll definitely accommodate you there. All right, so let's go back in here and try to do this sewer, pseudo wire from scratch. Uh, for your term, I'm already up. We'll ignore that that happened. Um, on interface, Jazz00. All I need here is IP address 10.189.205.253. And I need to create the pseudo wire class. Uh, show run. 
Yeah, I want to take this out. We're going to take the cross connect out. Okay, no IP address. And let me see, in the lesson, what does he configure first? Does he configure the class? Like, is this an order of operations? Yeah, he does the class first. So we're gonna do sudowire class r51 underscore r47. In cap, L layer two tunneling protocol V3. Now I think it's going to error out here. I think it's going to error out. Okay, I do need an IP local interface. And this is going to be the interface facing the customer site. Warning, the interface has no configured IP address. I think that's the point. All right, let's go to the config guide. And let's see, let's just do master index because I'm not sure where this might be. We'll go to pseudo wire class. All right, what is this? WAN? What is MP? Oh, multi protocol MPLS. Pseudo wire class. See, I'm just specifying a name here. A pseudo wire class name, okay. Pseudo wire class template that consists of configuration settings used by all attached mint circuits bound to the class. So our class includes the following configuration setting. Okay, so you could bind this class to multiple interfaces, right? Okay, related commands, L2TP class creates a template of L2 control that can be inherited by different pseudo R classes. Okay, so you can nest that configuration in there. Pseudo wire bind an attachment circuit to an L2 pseudo wire for, for cross connect service or X connect. Cross connect, bind an attachment circuit to a pseudo wire for a cross, an inner cross connect configuration mode. Okay, so not much there. Yeah, this is just a pseudo wire class. And inside of this command, uh, so do all L2 VPNs somewhere down the line involve MPLS? Uh, not necessarily. Um, you know, I would imagine these days a lot of them might be, but there's probably a lot out there now that are not writing over MPLS. Um, so there's a there's a good uh, that's a good question. There's a good some good material about this in the drill sheet. 
I kind of made a chart on this when I was studying. And these are a lot of Metro E components, right? You have E line. Some of them will go over traditional like T1 circuits. Um, so if we focus on this, right, you have uh, EPL, which is Ethernet private line. And that's point to point. This could map to layer two traffic and could utilize a traditional TDM circuit. So it could be like a point to point. Um, that's a Metro E service though. Uh, and I guess you would consider it Let me see your question. So do all L2 VPNs somewhere down the line involve an MPLS? Yeah, the question is, is this really a layer two VPN? Would you use a layer two VPN service on an EPL Metro E circuit? Um, I would think so. Uh, you also have ethernet wire service, point to point. I would think for like the point to multi-point, So you have, uh, this is probably better. E-Line is point-to-point -point Ethernet service. So this is an Ethernet link. E-LAN is point, multi-point to multi-point. E-Tree, EBC, th these are components. But the uh, virtual private wire service and virtual private line service, these are definitely over MPLS. So there's a lot of stuff out there, and there's a lot of stuff not in this chart that service providers use, have different names for, different protocols. These are the ones pretty much covered, though, in the um, in the scope of this exam. So yeah, they don't have to be, but I'm sure new, like any new circuits. Uh, new, what I, should I say, uh, new services that are provisioned, layer two service. I would imagine a lot of providers are doing that over MPLS just to leverage their existing backbone. Um, so we do the pseudo-wire class. Now let's check on the other command, which is uh, encapsulation. Uh, show here's a blog I did a while ago at Sudowar and Adam. Okay, cool, man. Yeah, let's check that that out uh, VXLAN alternatives okay Adam and L2 TPV3 yeah No IP, no IP, yeah. Oh, let's look at your configuration. This might help me here. So our class, I want encapsulation. Okay, so most of those except you are physically circuit to each site, which would be expensive, I would imagine, much like frame relay, yeah. There's legacy, you know, a lot of legacy infrastructure out there, ATM. Um, all right, solution one is Adam, right? Solution two, well, I'm telling you, this looks just like the configuration that I'm using. 
but it doesn't really it doesn't seem to be happy with it let me look at this guy to make sure specify to be used encapsulation command Command modes, usage guidelines. The command must secure that it will be referenced from S Connect or pseudo wire configured forward layer to traffic. Specify the name of the pseudo wire class, enters the pseudo wire class configuration mode. Now, in your topology, Let's look at um, which one switch to. Okay, your topology router two, router three, router two, GI zero one goes that way. Just has an IP address on it. And the IP local interface is pointing that way. Ah, okay. I swear, guys, if I, you know, I knew something had to be wrong. Thank you for posting that uh, show. That because I swear the lab has it going the other way. The lab in this book, in this uh, lesson. See, it's happy about that. Tell me I'm not crazy, folks. Um, router 1, GI 0 1. No, that's where it's pointing. Okay. All right. Maybe I just misread the uh, source. All right. Uh, probably my bad. I'm sure it is. All right, let's move this RFC. I want to reference that in a minute. I want to come back to that. I just want to get him out of the way of the screen. And we're going to move this here. Create a new desktop. Yes, welcome to our, uh, welcome to our place, uh, enjoy the atmosphere, enjoy the entertainment, and enjoy the views. Hopefully the music will get you in the right mood for the evening. <laughs> Alright, that's, uh, yeah, not age appropriate. Alright. Okay, so we've, I think we're over that little milestone here, let's, or that little hurdle. So now let's try to configure interface, uh, GI02, this is the interface facing the customer, no IP address, and cross connect. 10.189.255.254 in cap wait what is it does it not like something oh the yeah VC value is going to be 5147 in cap layer 2 TPV3 pseudo wire class R51 underscore R47 Okay, it's not barking at me, so we may be on the right track here. We may be on our way.
Maybe we can just fix this config. Okay, uh, sudo wire R file. Let's see, it say it's going IP local interface Jezero 2. And that is incorrect. So in this case, it should be. Cap is the same. IP local interface Jazz zero, 00. Okay, I realize that local interface change allowed Sudor with cross connects. I realize I have a cross connect configured, but. All right, let's let's back out. That's what I had to do on the other side. Let's just remove this. Show run section pseudo wire. Okay, pseudo-wire class, R5147, encapsulation, IP local interface, J02, that's good. Uh, show run interface J00, that is good. Show run interface J02, okay. Uh, this should not have an IP address. Now, cross connect. Is ten dot one eighty nine dot two hundred five dot two five three. Uh, virtual circuit ID. This was not in network lessons, by the way. So that's why I was being a little skeptical. It did not have that in the lesson but you definitely need it here. I tried it without and it doesn't work. Um, in cap, L2 TPV3 and pseudo our class, R51 underscore R47. Please make sure pseudo our class R51 is configured and valid. What? Incomplete. Okay, I think I need to remove everything and then just put it back. Yeah, uh, let's do that. No pseudo wire. And then show run interface jazz zero two. No cross connect. Okay. Show run section pseudo wire should not have anything here. Alright, pseudo wire class. This is good, I'm getting practice here. R51, R47. And cap, layer two, tunneling protocol V3. IP local interface is GI00.
cool. Okay, it's happy so far. Interface GI02. Cross connect. Ten dot one eight nine two five five dot two five three. That's correct. What unconfigure? Oh, I've got a no in front of that. Okay, looks like it's happy. Yeah, we all right. Now, let's just go direct to a ping here. Uh, host 61 should be able to ping 10.189 to 5.241. Yes, working. Uh, 246. Woohoo! Nice. All right, uh, that was my signal to do a stand-up break. So we got this working. When I come back in about two minutes or so, um, we will do some Wireshark captures and take a look at the encapsulation and also look for these uh, raw mode that we talked about earlier. So be right back.
All right, we're back. We're gonna change our uh, playlist here. I'm gonna rename this to uh, Boogie Nights. Ah. And we're gonna go back to, uh, I guess I'll rock. We'll try this one. All right, so we have just successfully turned up pseudo wire man I don't know how I got those uh, backwards but if we look at the configuration I mean it makes sense first of all um, that you would the local interface for the pseudo wire would be um, like this, you know, diagram is showing. I mean, it's going to be facing the pseudo wire is like a virtual wire connecting between these two routers. So it's going to be this interface, right? And we're telling it here, uh, there's a class and everything assigned to this class is going to use every interface, right? I'm sure it could be multiple, I would assume. Um, you would have this encapsulation type. Uh, then you you put your cross connect, which if you think about a literal cross connect wire, um, you're going to be cross connecting the pseudo wire over to. Uh, I need to be over here. Cross connecting the pseudo wire over to this wire over here, which is an inter a wired interface so that it would go into this side, right? And I don't know how I got from the other one that I, I that the local interface here needed to be Jezero 2, but anyway, once we got over that, it, got, it started working. Let's do some caps. So I wanna cap on both sides. I'm already capping though, I think. Uh, we're capping, who is this? Uh, if we look at, oh, here we go, yeah. Nice, so we have control messages. What is this? HDLC, look at that. We've even got HDLC going over the tunnel. Zero CCC, I thought I recognized that protocol. Sweet, okay, let's mark. Oh, we got some good stuff in here. We got some really good stuff in here. Let's mark, first of all, this and if we do a show CDP this was the case with Adam that we would see CDP showing the remote so let's go to the customer side show CDP neighbor yep H60 sweet I have had customers in the past that use layer two, uh, layer two circuits. N these days you see layer three so often, but I have definitely seen layer three in production. Um, let's see what else. Oh, uh, so we've got some CDP. Uh, we've got, yeah, Cisco HDLC. This is using a different protocol number, though. Let's mark that one. Some L2 TP. All right, this is a control message. And what is in this control message? What's in this beauty right here? First of all, it has its own protocol number, right? 115. Control message, connection ID. Control connection, NSNR. I don't know what all that means, that's okay. 
yellow. Then we have this response. So I'm sure there's sort of a negotiation that takes place here. Zero length body message. All right. So I'm sure there are MTU considerations here as well, right? Because what's the size of the... This is 16 bytes. These hellos are sent at a particular intervals, it appears as well. Uh, we should have ICMP traffic here. We may not, though, because it's encapsulated, I would think. This is router 47. Uh, what interface is this? Virtual four seven zero. Uh, do we have any ICMP? No. All right. I'd like to see the. Oh, that's my. Uh, I'll be right back, folks. That's my uh, water for the coffee boiling. So what we should do is let's just uh, let's trip it again, and I, I'm not sure about this capture. So let's just do it again. Uh, we'll do router 47, both sides. Actually, the main side I'm interested in is G00. Interrupted system call. Now that's something new. Okay, interesting. Let's try that again. Actually, let's go up here. We'll go to router 51. Okay, nice. There we have some HDLC. Um, we should see the pseudo wire hello, or whatever interval that is. But oh, we've got DTP, I mean, we've got spanning tree, that's all. It's not encapsulated though. Yeah, this is encapsulated. DTP is not, spanning tree is not. So I'm curious, what will it encapsulate? Uh, well, those on the other end, it's not really running spanning tree. 
the switch is running spanning tree if this is not. Okay, here we go. Here's our control message. Uh, you know what? Let's trip the circuit. Let's trip the wire. And watch what happens. So we're going to go to 51. Shut the interface. And no shut. Well, I'll give it a second. Uh, well, that's uh, going down. I'm going to grab this coffee and I'll be right back. Okay, do have coffee, nice. All right, so let's bring it back up. Looks like just normal control messages, hellos. So just keep sending hellos. Let's do a ping from the client and the customer. Two forty six. There we go. All right, let's see if we can unpack what's happening here. Uh, it looks like. Cisco HDLC Yeah, I don't see the pings. They must be Maybe they're being interpreted as these right here these HDLC packets Interesting So we definitely see CDP. That's from switch three though. Oh, here's a gratuitous ARP, interesting. Oh, so we see ARP traffic. Uh, that's not encapsulated though. So let me just do a search on this, L2TPV3. This is all of our traffic that's encapsulated. And it's interesting that it either comes across as HDLC. The control messages. Let's try to ping in the other direction.
Okay, yeah, these are coming across as like these HDLC messages, I'm pretty sure of it. That could be a Wireshark thing. Um, let's see, Wireshark. Um, 2012. Track the session settings negotiated during the session setup. This means that rather than requiring the user to specify. Oh, so we may have to tell it to decode. But see, it's L2TP. It sees these as version 3 as well. Okay. LTTP V3 payload type. A wormhole through your network. Let me see what these captures look like. ICMP. <laughs> Excuse me. Cloud Shark. Okay, it gets the same thing. HDLC. Okay, so I'm not the only one. Fascinating. ICMP over LTTP pseudowire, ICMP in LT2P. I don't know how those are different. Cisco HDLC is how it gets interpreted. Interesting. All right, well, I don't want to get too deep here. I think we captured a good sample. Let's uh, save our sample. Let's mark some packets. We want a copy of, we want that, we want that. And we want some of this. Notice how it's sort of iterating these. Protocol numbers. That's probably just a misinterpretation. Decoding issue. Cool. Let's say this. I gotta stop it. Mark packets only, and we're gonna call this um, L. Let's see, L2 VPN wireline L2 TP V3. Nice. And let's write these changes. We want to save this for future use. And export configs. Okay, so back to Back to this, what are the two Ethernet pseudo-wire modes? Raw and tagged. 
All right, I think I got the difference there. Oh, where's the answer? Yeah, okay, just raw and tagged. And that is according to this RFC. Pseudo wire type, Ethernet. Um, tag mode, the Ethernet frame will be encapsulated according to the procedures defined later. It should be noted that the VLAN identifier is modified by the egress PE, the Ethernet spanning tree protocol might fail to work properly. We really wouldn't uh, see a lot of that unless we did, unless we hooked up switches instead of routers. Which we could do, but at this stage we need to keep moving. Ah, glad you like the music, Banner. This is more, a little bit of rock. Uh, Okay, that part we're gonna say is pretty much, oh yeah, let's keep going a few more of these questions. Uh, what is another name for an Ethernet pseudo, pseudo, wire, in raw, pseudo wire in raw mode? Um, untagged, port based, okay. Uh, port based, VLAN based, all right. Ah, right, because This is where you're adding tags, or the customer is adding tags, right? What's the difference between tagged and raw mode, Ethernet pseudo wires? Tag mode receives a service delimiting VLAN tag. Raw mode removes any service delimiting VLAN tags with same data across pseudo wire. Both modes transparently pass customer. Okay, right, right. This is the best explanation yet, I think. Which makes sense. If you have multiple customers and or um, you're using a VLAN service, uh, that is tag mode. Yes. That is raw. Zero X005. Zero X004. Okay. Um, L2TP. I don't think we had anything there. Yeah, we just had two. Yeah, 115. Yeah. All right, close down the cards. We're going to get back to the next network lesson. Metro Ethernet. Now, I don't think there are any labs for this. This is just a lesson. Yeah, that's right. So I'm going to skip that for now and read that later. I've already read that once. I'm going to read it again. IPsec. Um, that is also a lesson, which I will come back to. Uh, yeah, so we're in a new section now. Uh, congratulations to us. We have finished the... Tunneling. Tunneling is done. Yeah, I was hoping there would be some of these, but I mean, that's okay. Like labs. I'm sure I can find some. My goal is to get through a lot of this today. I may skip IPsec because I'm more or less familiar with that. I really wanted to get to this Git VPN lab today and this IP6 over IP4 Jerry with IPsec. So let's let's go right to Git VPN. I think there's a lab here.
Yep, lesson, lesson, skipping through lesson. I've already read through this lesson, actually. And now we're going to do a configuration. And we need a key server. GM1, GM2, and GM3. Okay, so first we're gonna do, we need a topology to work with this. I think we've gone through this whole thing, so. Go to grooves. All right, let's see, how can we do this here? I think this can be any Yeah, this really needs to be a switch. You know what, we might make um, this guy our key server. And we're just gonna put a network here and three, three more routers. Gonna keep it simple. You know me, I like to keep it simple. <laughs> okay. Yeah, let's do it over. I wanted to put it down here, but probably not gonna happen. All right, let's add three routers. The system's like, you wanna do what? <laughs> And we're gonna have to have, so we're gonna have a shared segment. And we're gonna have uh, these routers with three loopbacks. One key server and four group members. All right, let's zoom in on that. Well, let's just, uh, Uh, vertical line oh. All right, let's zoom in see what's going on I need the 10,000 foot view Yeah, I think this 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 guy's starting to get a little taxed And we might need to uh, upgrade Uh, let's do this. Can I do these? I'm curious. Okay, I don't think that did anything. That's fine. Let's at least align these. Horizontal. Oh, no, 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 no. That needs to go down. There we go. And let's move these out. Yeah, it's, it's kind of freaking out a little bit. Not too bad. Okay, we'll shut him down for the time being. will only be connected to let's see she has zero one yeah all the way around And 
we're going to need a no new network, so I think we're going to use 10 dots. Uh, what is he using here? 192. Yeah, we're gonna have to upgrade the lab for sure. Even though it says... Yeah, see, I don't know what to think of this now. These metrics. Uh, Jazzer 1. This VM, I think this VM is provisioned. Yeah, this is this is the big Kona. This is the 20 vCPUs, 160 gig of RAM. much to configure here in terms of interfaces of course uh, loopbacks each will have a loopback and I think yeah I don't think the key management server has a loopback or the key server Okay, uh, let's go ahead and create, uh, what do we use down here, 10.189, yeah. So let's just copy this. This is just going to be 10 dot uh, 187 dot um, 128 dot 0 slash 17. How do we like that? Yeah, 10187 128. Yeah, that was going to be kind of fun, so let's do that. And in order to depict get VPN, I think what I want to do is just create a maybe a little cloud. So let's just add a circle. A new background light and airy the yeah, VPN should be cool would be cool yeah man uh, it's definitely a more scalable solution 
with your secrets and All right, that should have been There we go. New subscriber in my forces. How are you doing these days? My force hadn't heard from you in a while. Thank you for that Twitch Prime subscription. Thank you for the support. Uh, enjoy your emotes. Your emote. Mota. One day I'll be able to get more uh, emotes. Uh, hope all is well, my friend. Hope you're having a good Monday afternoon. Hope your your ticket queue is short. That's good, man. I'm glad you've been doing well. Hope your studies are going well also. Uh, I'm doing pretty well, man. I got 50 days to go till the next um till the next attempt on the CCI you written. And I will say that if nothing else. Um, at least I have exposed myself to all the tech, all of the items that are in the, um, you know, that are in the blueprint because, um, I feel like the last time, the last two times, there were so many things that seemed to be kind of out of the blue, uh, but I've really taken... I've really tried hard this time to sink into stuff that, you know, it's not just learning the protocols I'm familiar with, but really digging into things that I've never been exposed to before um, that are on the blueprint. So hopefully that will yield results. Really wasn't, um, like my last scores weren't way off by any means uh, as a matter of fact if i if i had passed the evolving technology section i would have come close to passing um so hopefully this extra several months will be able to i mean i mean even labbing this stuff get vpn i read about a number of times you know with get vpn one thing i think is important is the there's different sets of keys, right? Like there's uh, uh, the Keck and the Tech, the key encryption key and the traffic encryption key. So I think it's important to know the difference there. Uh, R62, you got this. I'm saying for the second half, CCNA RS. She's in a cyber by Christmas. Wow, two exams by Christmas. That is awesome, man. My exam is uh, on a holiday. It is on, uh, well, it's on New Year's Eve, December 31st, last day of the year. So that's good, man. CCNA, second half of the CCNA. Good luck on that, dude. So that means you'll get that CCNA route switch, which I tell you, man, when you finally pass that, it feels really good to get that first like Cisco cert, you know, it feels really good. It just occurred to me that might look better about right there. I'm trying to I'm trying to hatch out of the egg here. There we go. Or get VPN egg. It's about to hatch. All right, so pretty simple setup. I'm trying to think, do I need anything else here? Um, loopbacks. So let's assign some loopbacks. Uh, we'll use a really small, pretty small text here. That looks like a good candidate.
And CCMP route switch for 2019. I love it, man. Goals. What's going to be interesting here, guys, so we see how the interface is starting to slow down finally after, what, 65 routers? Um, but I wonder if we'll see a significant speed up upgrading to different VM just because this could be sort of a programmatic shortcoming. I don't know. We'll find out. Uh, let's say this is 10. Dot uh, 10.255.208.255. Um, Got to always keep moving forward, you know? Um, Never look back, right? And I think what I'm going to do on this one, folks, is just come down here to the bottom configuration and just put the configuration in. All right, this will be two, five, four. Yeah, a lot of this looks very similar. Uh, just to avoid any issues, I may vary this up a little bit here. Let's do... Um, let's see, our upper boundaries for uh, reserved IP addresses. We know 224. Can we use 223? These are our BOGON lists right here, pretty much. 203 is a bogon. Uh, I don't believe 223 is. So let's do 223.205.255. That's trippy. We're going to try it out. 223.205.255. Um, let's do 254.205 slash 32. Living on the edge. Actually, you know what? Let's do 223. No, we'll stick with that. All right. I get too cute here. Okay, let's start up these routers. I think we have everything we need. Public create network, yeah, that happens from time to time. Sixty-three, sixty-four, so it's just uh, forty, whatever that is, forty. All right, let's try them again. Starting up. Okay, so we'll go, let's see, 64, 63, 64, 63. I will say, folks, when you get those, when you get those shirts, man, celebrate. Do me a favor. Go buy yourself something. Take a significant other somewhere special. 
you know, get a steak. Uh, it's important to celebrate, and part of the celebration is taking a little break, you know. Trust it from an old man like me. Um, pacing yourself, and one, you really want to enjoy, you know. I actually enjoy this stuff. I know, it sounds... My family sometimes gives me that funny look, right? When I, um, I really do enjoy this stuff. I mean, I wouldn't be doing it otherwise. I know that's the same for you folks, too. Um, but, you know, beyond that, you do, no matter how much you enjoy it, it is so easy to overdo it. Like, it's very easy to, you know... Like, I'm actually, once I finish up the, this lab, this will probably be it for me for the day. Not for study, but for, for labbing. And I'll probably go back to reading. I might do watch, you know, a little TV or something. Just kind of chill because I'm going back to work tomorrow. And I've had six days of pretty solid, you know, study and labbing. And I don't want to be too fatigued tomorrow. Just all, like, worn out. Because that's... A few times I've done that. I've done these studycations, shorter, but I've done them like three or four days in length and just went all out and then came into work and, you know, uh, like uh, the last one I did, I did four days straight. It was a Labor Day weekend or something like that. And my wife had actually taken a trip with some family, so it was just me here. And I did four days solid, and that was when I did my first, like, marathon labs. I streamed them, too. I did, like, a 13-hour, 10-hour, you know, etc. And I tell you, at the end of four days of doing that, um, I went to the bed and just collapsed, man. I just... And this time, though, I did good. Like, I took breaks, and, like, yesterday, I took off from streaming... Um, only did a few labs and I'm feeling feeling good I'm not feeling like super drained or anything um, yeah we're definitely stressing our lab environment folks because uh, I could just tell these routers normally boot faster than this so I think we had, may have found sort of the upper limits or close to it of what this particular VM size can handle. Um, and I've become impatient. Like on my local machine, I might tolerate this, but I've become very spoiled using this Azure VM. And this is a little too slow. So, yeah, we're just... Uh, It's a good lab though, and I think we can just, I think on a new VM, we'll definitely be able to continue to grow it. Uh, I see the CPU hogs. Uh, no, actually not too bad. Maybe it's just momentary. Okay, um, not too bad. Whenever routers are booting, uh, like that is the most stressful uh, on the system, for sure. Yeah, it's it's just starting to struggle. I'm sure it'll calm down once they come up, but normally that would not even stress the system too much. Um, if I look at the VM performance. Fresh. Oh, not that one. This one. Yeah, see, so it never gets over 40, but um, again, I, I think this is just kind of like the same situation you have with VM where you're trying to report the VM performance. Okay, host name.
And let's configure these interfaces. Okay, we got all four up. So let's pop out this topology. And pull this over. There we go. More RAM, yes. Exactly, more CPUs too. <laughs> All right, we're gonna do a no shut here and um, IP address 10.187.128. Actually, let's put this on the other end of the spectrum. So this is gonna be 205.255.254. Oh, sorry, 10.187.255.254. Or I am, yes, to uh, and 128.0. Okay, router 62, um, interface GI01, IP address 10.187.128.62. Uh, we won't tor torture ourselves here. No shut. Interface Jazz Zero One. Um, IP address. Oh, I didn't do the loop back. That's okay. I'll come back. 10.187.128.62. Okay, and uh, hey, new follower. Chaos Theory. I like the name. Chaos Theory 34. Thank you for the follow. Welcome to the Land Tamer stream. Um, where we are going CCIE or bust and playing with networking so yeah welcome uh, feel free to join our discord and uh, join up in the conversation share your pains and sorrows as well as your happy moments uh, we're creating loopbacks here. IP address 223.255.254.255. As we're sick and disturbing like that, come back and do this loopback. Interface L64. Right, folks that was my little um pomodoro timer saying i need to take a quick stand-up break so i'll be back in just a sec and we'll finish out this lab but i gotta do some uh, i gotta you know neck and back safety right
And we're back, and we're ready to change the playlist here. Let's go to upbeat, I guess. Okay, so router 62, um, let's see if we can ping 10.187.128. Or actually, 5.254. We can, sweet. Ping 10.187.128.2. See, is that him? That's 63, right? Oh, shut down. Yep, interface J01, no shut. Ooh, yeah. All right, now let's do um, router 64. IP address. And that one is seven, that one's three. No shut. Interface L644. IP address 223.255.255.255. And make sure he can ping now. Ping um, 10.187.128.3. It can. Good. All right, so we got basic connectivity here. Let's take a look at some of our next steps. I think they want to want us running OSPF. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that before we configure um, get VPN. Does the key server run OSPF? No, it does not. Again, I think that's just to... It's not going to use it as a hub. It's just using it for encryption of the traffic, right? So let's go to server six, uh, router 62. And router OSPF 6.530. And our network is 223-205-253-205-0000 area. How high can I go on this? Um, ooh, can I do... 223-205-253-205-0000? says we can't and network um, 10.187.128.0 0, 0 .0 0 0.127.255 0 .0 I believe is what we need there area 224.0013 Okay, come over here. GI01, router OSPF 60530, network 223.255.254.25. And then network 10.187.128.0. .0 Should get an adjacency now. That music is a little loud for me anyway. Drop it down.
show IP address brief. I wonder if it doesn't like the router ID. All right, still two way. It may stay that way. Oh, X start, good. Nice. Ping two two three two five two five three eight. Yeah, yeah. All right. So now let's go to router six four. Router OSPS six zero five three zero. Network two two three two five two five two five. And the network ten dot one eight seven one twenty eight dot zero zero dot zero dot one twenty seven two five. So basically we should have full reachability, but no encryption, right? All in the open. Transmitted in the clear, there we go. So we should have, who will win this? Who will be the uh, BDR and DR? So, yeah, router 62, 223.255.254.255, uh, no, router 63, okay. Yeah, DR, that's just because we don't have preempt, so it's not preemptive, right? Yeah, DR, BDR. Okay. Shared segment. So now let's go to our configuration. First, we need to configure the key server, which is this guy, 40. Crypto, ISACAMP, policy 10, encryption AES, authentication pre share, root. And it looks like we do uh, crypto isocamp key uh, Yave address zero 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 zero. Kind of like a DMVPN. We need to be able to accept if it's dynamic, we need to be able to accept any range. All right, crypto IPsec transform set. ESP, AES, ESP, SHA, HMAC, mode tunnel. So notice we're not doing transport in this case, we're doing mode tunnel. And crypto IPsec profile IPsec profile set transform set. Okay, simple enough, right? All right, here's where we go with the um, get VPN configuration crypto GDOI. Uh, so it's official Stanley dies at age 95. Wow, Rip May, your legend live within our hearts. Wow, 91. Man, I hope I live to 91 for sure. What a man! I mean, he did good. What an interesting life, right? So we are the local server. Okay, GDOI, group, dyn uh, dynamic, I don't know what that stands for. <laughs> group domain of interpretation. <laughs> okay. 
I remember that now. All right, rekey authentication. My pub key. RSA, RSA keys. Setting rekey authentication rejected. Probably because we don't have a key yet. That's okay. Key transport is unicast. SA IPsec 10 profile IPsec profile match address IPv4 ICMP. We're going to have an access list. Replay counter window size 64. No tag. Address IPv4. Um, this is what we're going to listen on 10.187.128. Actually, this would be 2254. Uh, 128.0. Uh, doesn't like address. Oh, that's gotcha. IPv4 10.187.205.254. Oh, we don't need a mask here. Makes sense, too. Okay, and then IP access list extended. ICMP. Show run section GDOI. Incomplete unicast rekey configuration. Uh, it may take it now though because Oh, we don't have keys. Yeah, we got to generate our keys. I'm kind of skipping around on this lab, so. Yeah. Crypto. Oh, this is under config. Crypto key generate RSA modulus. Or label RSA. There we go. You gotta have your crypto key. SSH enabled. Show run section GDOI. And the song is like long. Incomplete unicast. Okay, because it didn't let me add it, right? So let's go back in. Server local. Rekey authentication. My pub key or say or say underscore keys. Now it likes it. GDI five K key server rekey transport to Unicast group. GDI group transition to Unicast rekey. All right. Profile, okay. All right, it looks happy. So 
let's go to server number one. Uh, we also need to do Crypto Isocamp. Wait a second, do I need a SSH key on here too? I don't think so. Because he just needs a public key, right? Yeah. Crypto Isocamp policy 10. Encryption AES. Authentication pre share. Group 5. Crypto. Isocamp key my underscore key address. Uh, 10.187.128. Hold on. Yeah, this is the IP of the key server. Uh, this would be 205-204. Okay, he likes it. He likes it. Crypto IPsec. Transform set. SP AES, yeah, SP Shaw, HMAC, mode tunnel, and then crypto. I always tend to put the P before the Y. P D O I group. Identity number one, two, three, server address. IPv4. Okay, crypto map. GDOI. The new credit will remain disabled. Yes, typical. Set group GDOI underscore group. And then our interface GI01. Crypto map. Start registration to key server. Okay, that's good. All right, let's uh, verify our work here. Um, on key server. Uh oh. Ike message from failed its sanity check or is malformed. Uh oh, okay. Show crypto GDOI. Uh, group identity is one, two, three. Yep. Group member zero at the moment. We have an SA rekey number 10. Lifetime transfer period, retransmit attempts. ACL configured access ICMP. Huh, he doesn't like, he's not passing the sanity check here. Start registration.
right, let's look at the configuration here. Show run section crypto. Crypto Ice Camp Policy 10, version AES, authentication for share. Group 5, Ice Camp Key, my key, address 1027. It's definitely sending. Crypto IPC transfer set. Mo tunnel, crypto GDOI group, GDOI underscore group. In number one, two, three, server address 10, one, eight, seven, two, five, five, Yeah, I still have, I can still reach it. It's just not encrypted yet. They haven't negotiated. So set group, GDY underscore group. And crypto underscore map. Uh, what are we missing here? Uh, let's look at the key server again. Show run section crypto. Across the camp policy 10, encryption AES, authentication for sugar 5, cryptos camp key, my underscore key. Oh, the key. Name. I was getting cute here. I wonder. No crypto isocamp key my underscore key. Crypto isocamp key Yahweh. Now, let's see what happens. Um... Show crypto GDY, right? Still no group members. Did he fail? Shut. No oh, shut. OSPF is up. We have the new CRL, GDI. There's some timers here that we're not. Drives Camp Key Yave address 10172524. That's right. Did it remove? Oh, does it not do it unless I generate traffic that hits the ACL? Show run Airways Jazz 01. Crypto maps there.
Zero group members. Yeah, I'm not seeing attempts anymore, I don't think. He's like, rejected. Um, all right, so show run interface jazz zero one. Can we trip it over here as well? Three key transmit period, 10 seconds. Transmit attempts two. All right, let's try another machine then. Maybe he'll come back into line here in a minute. All right, group management uh, member number two. Ripto, Isocamp, policy 10, encryption AES, authentication pre-share, group 5, Ripto, Isocamp, key, Yave, address 10.127.205.254. So IPsec transform set ESP AES ESP SHA HMAC mode tunnel crypto GDOI group GDOI underscore group identity number one two three it's the same server address IPv4 10.127.255.4 crypto map crypto underscore map 10 GDOI set group GDOI underscore group and then on our interface interface GI01 crypto map Applied. Oh, we got a little more action here. SA Tech was updated. The tech and the keck. We got a tech and we got a keck. Complete. Installation of registration rekey policies from key server. Nice. Okay, the other one, he's just on, he he's like in the corner. He's being punished. Like he was, go, he was told to go stand in the corner. He's in timeout. Some sort of timeout, I guess. So now, if we do show crypto GDI, we should have one member. And we do. Nice. Uh, so let's look at some of this output here. Oh, yeah, we saw that earlier. We want to see show crypto GDI KS members. There we go. There's our first member. He is registered. The key server ID is this. No rekey sent yet. That's a long time. A uh, rekey timeout. That's like a day, I think. Um, GM version one dot interesting. So you can see the group member ID and the state here. Those are important. And then let's look at show crypto GDOI KS policy. Uh, key policy. We have a keck and a tech policy. Unicast, encaps, encaps tunnel, access list ICMP. Okay, so um, this policy was pushed out to this server. So what I'm assuming right now is that this server will not be able to ping 
um, 10 that it will be able to ping the server and possibly not the other routers 10.187.128.255.254 yeah, can ping him. Um, ping. Well, what was the policy here? The access list. It was just ICMP. Any. So yeah, let me try to ping one of the other machines. Uh, ping. 10.187.128.1. Fail. Okay, that's expected. That's good. Now let's put this. This is actually good that the first one didn't work. Um, so let's go ahead and configure this guy. Uh, server number three. Um, crypto isocamp policy. I used to be able to type this, just all this ISOCAMP stuff. Whenever I was doing uh, IPsec, DMVPN, man. Authentication, pre share, group five. Um, address 10.187.12. Uh, 255.254. Before I attempt the practical lab exam, I will know all this by heart without even being able to think about it. I know you can use different transform sets, things like that. But these seem to be the most common mode, tunnel, crypto, IPsec. A crypto GDOI group. What was it again? GDOI. Um, group. Domain of interpretation. Interesting. Uh, group GDOI underscore group. So it's almost like a religious thing here. Philosophical. Over here in this domain, we interpret things this way. If you're gonna be in our group, you have to interpret things the same way. Crypto map. Just funny names sometimes that come up with things. I know naming naming things is sometimes the hardest. You ever come across that when you're working in a team and you're designing a, a network uh, or something new like in Azure? We got all this new these new types of objects, at least new to me in our team. And it's like, oh, so what do we name it? Sometimes that's the hardest decision to make. And sometimes spark the biggest like arguments about, you know, how we should stru do the naming structure. Interface has zero one. Okay, we got a group set. Crypto map. Okay, we should register now. Boom, shakalaka, success. That was quick actually. So now if I ping 10.187.205.204. Might still be sort of like negotiating the, or downloading the policy, I don't know, installation. 10.187.205.254. Hmm.
Oh, this is me trying to re yeah register again. What's happening there? Uh, can he still ping him? He can. Did he fail right? Oh, I bet I did the wrong key. No, crypto ice camp key, Yami address 10, what do you said to it? Four. I always check to see if I spelled crypto wrong. I always want to put uh, the P before the Y, but we're good here. Interesting. All right, do we have another? Let's go back to another uh, playlist here. Huh. All right, so let's do. Uh oh. Decaps receive. Ten, uh, something's wrong here. Invalid SPI. Decaps receive as invalid SPI for destination 10. Source address. Input interface. Interesting. Wait, 10187128.62. Uh, okay. Do I have the wrong IP on here? Okay. I don't think that makes a difference, but all right, he may try to register now. Success. Okay. Ten dot one eighty seven dot one two uh two five five dot two five four. Source address ten one seven one two input interface. What is it not like? All right, they're all registered. Except for him, he is not. Oh, this thing, did it reboot? No, okay. Um, show IP interface brief. That's right, 63 is dot two. Ten dot one eight seven dot one twenty eight dot three. Yeah, paying ten dot one eight seven one twenty eight dot three. Yeah, this is the only one with encryption that's working. IP interface brief. All right, so we've got two that uh, one is encrypting, two that are encrypting, and two that are not. Interesting. 
The account for CIVSEC packet is invalid SPI for destination 10187128.2. All right, let's compare configurations here. Ah, I have a typo. That's what it is. Okay. Shoot the darn typos. Oh. Always the typos. 187. Probably did the same on this one. No, he looks okay. 10... 187 show run section crypto Ten one eight seven two five five two five four. Ah, crypto GDOI group server address. Ah, IP four ten dot one eight seven two five two five four. Okay, you should register now. Source address 10, 187.128.1, yeah, that's why. Ten one eight seven two five two four four ten one eight seven two five two five four. Okay, this all looks good. Something looks different between these two. Crypto Camp Policy 10, Encryption AES, Authentication Pre-Share, Group 5, Crypto Camp Key, Yave. Transform Set, SPAS, okay, Mode Tunnel. Oh, it's got an error here, okay. Crypto G DOI, all right, fine. Identity one two three. I thought I put you in there before. Crypto GDOI group. Ah, it's lowercase. Crypto GDOI group. Case sensitive, apparently. All right, they all look the same now.
Oh wait, this one is wrong. Um, crypto GDOI group. Costly mistakes in terms of time. Let's see if they match up. This course is not in the lab. This is not part of the, um, in the scope of the lab, just the written. But same principle applies in terms of typos. No server address IPv4 10.127.255.4. Okay. All right, everybody should be in sync now. Registered, registered, registered. Nice. All right, let's see if that's true. Ping 10.187.128.2. Uh, how about the key server? Invalid SPI, huh? Clear crypto SA. Let's clear them all. Clear crypto SA. Clear crypto SA. And IPsec, right? Hey, Formosa, how's it going? Thanks for stopping in. Let's do that as well. Clear crypto IPsec SA. Interesting. Client. Okay, so we have successful registration now. Clear, let's do it here too. Clear crypto SA. SPI for destination 10. Uh, show crypto SA. GDOI. IPsec SA uh, clear crypto session Show crypto GDOI. Um, group. GDOI KS. All right, 10, 187, 254, registered. 
we've got uh, dot one, dot three, and dot 62 still. That's a problem because that's no clear crypto GDOI group. Key server will destroy. It will destroy creating and downloaded policies. That's exactly what I want you to do. Hold on, I want to capture that. That's kind of a cool. I love it when they have these very dramatic. Destroy. It will be destroyed. Yes. All right, that's uh, server 62. Maybe he's the only one truly registered at this point. No one yet. Okay. It looks like he's attempting to re-register. He's attempting to register. Maybe these guys think they're registered. Clear crypto GTOI. Now let's try to send some traffic. Okay, he's, all right, they're all registered again, it looks like, unless I just cleared them. There we go. So now ping 10.187.128.25254. See if we get an error here. Still getting an error message. Source address 1027 input interface. Um, all right, let me check the. Maybe my access list is wrong or something. server oh, but that's correct ah so I don't think I ever created my access list or if I did no permit ICMP any any So GDOI debug GDOI underscore group. Let's debug crypto GDOI. Uh, let's just do all features. Let's do um, interesting terse. Packet, event, error, detail, all levels. Let's do error to start. This is kind of like debugging uh, IPsec. There's like these different levels of debugging you can do. They can get very verbose. Debug crypto, GDOI, um, all features, error. Let's 
probably what I should have done over here. Okay, that's what I did here too. All right. So let's try to ping. I did have this, this was working at one point. Ping 10.187.5.4. Crypto for received packet invalid SPI decaps received IPsec packet as invalid SPI. Can you show IP interface for you? Sure, man. Show run interface T0. Yeah, this is for a um, NHRP group that is over here. Uh, this is DMVPN, but it, I'm not using IPsec here. It's DMVPN without IPsec. Uh, good, you know, good uh, call out though, for sure. Uh, what about Tunnel Protect? Yeah, so this is uh, for the DMVPN tunnel. And again, it's not, um, I only want to really protect traffic here in this, on this segment, this network. Um, paying 10.187. 128.1 You know what I'm gonna do? Alright, let's just make let's just go back. Let's back up for a second. Interface GI01. A tunnel between hub and router 62. So I haven't configured any tunnel interfaces. Um but there should be an IPsec tunnel now. Let's look at them. Yeah. See, I don't, I'm new to GDOI. I'm very new to this. This is my first get VPN configuration ever. Oh, receive packet, not an IPsec packet. Um, hmm. So it's expecting, so it has, it looks like, oh, the source. What are, what are we using for the source? Let me check over here in the example. Yes, yeah, so we should be seeing, all right, I need to be looking at, if you want IPsec tunnel, you need to enter tunnel protect on tunnel zero. Remember tunnel zero is for, um, Some IP sec IP six tunnels over DMVPN in this particular topology, right? I just kind of borrowed this router right here. So he's a DMVPN hub over here, right? But uh, show crypto GDOI IP sec SA protocol ICMP local identity any remote. Entity direction both. Okay, that is good. Um, now, what if we do um, include SPI? We don't have an SPI. Oh, show crypto. Make sure I have the uh, this window up so I can see any good uh, input here. Here, John M. Good evening to you, sir.
Oh, here we go. All right, this is what I'm used to. Current outbound SPI. And I have I have not used this in a while, folks. It has been a while because um, I used to do IPsec tunnels a lot on the ASA, but they were site to site. Okay, so local identity, remote identity. Uh, current peer, port 848. Uh, packets encapsulated, packets encrypted. Inbound ESPSAS. Active, active, uh, outbound ESPSAS. That all looks good. 10, 187.128.1. Ten dot one eight seven dot two five five dot two five four source Jazz zero one no encrypt decrypt packets on IPsec Yeah there's no decaps you're right it's not it's like it's not matching on the inbound SPI, right? Yeah. Invalid SPI for destination address. You know what I should do, folks? That's what I used to do all the time on the uh, ASA. I'm just going to restart. I had it jacked up in the beginning. I had the wrong IPs. So let's just restart. This is a virtual environment, so almost my bedtime, but thought I'd drop by. Yeah, man, thank you. Appreciate it. Show crypto IPsec SA interface other side. say is found uh, yeah that's a problem let's uh just reboot this bad boy uh, let's save this uh, these configs yeah I'm a little sad my uh, tomorrow I go back to, well, yeah, tomorrow I'll go back to my normal schedule. My vacation ends. Always a little sad, but uh, man, I've come a long ways on the, in these six days, I think. So I'm feeling pretty good about that and a uh, little introspective. But we have hit a lot of there. It is like really weak. I've hit a lot of really weak areas. Uh, so I'm feeling feeling good about having spent the time to cover all this and learned a lot. Above all else, that's the whole point, right? It's to learn. It's not just to get a cert. I'm trying to learn new technologies. So I've learned a lot in the last uh, six days. And uh, yeah, go back to our normal schedule. Sort of got back to it this morning. I got up at uh, 5.30 a.m. and went into the gym Trying to get back on track there. All right, let's let's reload. And as a matter of fact, let's reload the key server first. Did I export it? I think I did, just in case. Yeah, I did. Oh, it put in a yes. Shoot. 
Yeah, when you do the export config, it does something unusual here. By the way, load MS DOS. This is interesting, right? So you notice when you load the viral image, it does GNU Grub and DOS. <laughs> Yeah, let's reload these bad boys. Yeah, I hope everyone's having a good Monday. Well, that's uh, while well, these routers are booting up. Um, so this this is from NetworkLessons.com. Sli I've slightly modified uh, some of the addressing and things like that. But if you if you all want to check out, and there's a lot of good content in here. There's videos. There's PCAPs. Um, I have an annual subscription right now to networklessons.com. I hope this is the key to me helping me pass the uh, written this time. But we've gone over tunneling, and this took us most of our six days right here. Um, yeah, because I think I had finished up ISIS already, and we really started here last Wednesday and I got through encapsulation DMV PN IPv6 tunneling and today mainly we focus on L2 tunneling and then finally uh, we finished 4.1 tunneling so we got encryption IPsec I skipped most of this because I've already labbed a lot of that in the past I've already used that in production myself so we're doing a get VPN. That's uh, this is probably the last lab of today. Uh, the lab has been holding up. So the lab has grown up to. Uh, let's see. Oh, you're doing the same thing for most cool. In my device, show DMVPN interface tunnel to IP4 NHRP details. Wait a second. 253 peers, wow. Interface tunnel, 4,000. 276 peers, that is awesome, man. Yeah, I've not worked on any big uh, DMVPN implementations myself. Is that a lab or is that like a real... We have a big network, sounds like it. Man, DMVPN is great for a lot of different, you know, implementations a lot of people use it um, I've not worked on a DMVPN system that large before myself I would be curious how many I could do DMVPN in this on this uh, virtual machine because right now I've got I don't want to know why I can't turn those on. Doesn't matter. I've got 64 routers and three switches. That's cool though. Uh, show DMVPN, one more, <laughs> yeah, cool. Uh, wow, yeah, that's a lot. You know, I know uh, there's someone in our... Um, on the Discord, who works at a retail outlet like 
a retail outlet that has um, stores all over the country and malls and things like that, I would imagine, you know, that's probably a very ideal implementation of DMVPN. Keep your costs down, just, you know, basic internet to the sites. And using DMVPN. All right, so these routers have come up. Um, show run section crypto. Okay, start registration. Guys, I'm probably gonna kill the music because uh, I need some new playlists. I've heard these playlists now about three times today each, so I'm just gonna kill those. Um, I may at some point try to go ahead and get the we can kill this desktop. Uh, we have a similar set of lots of buildings in a small area. The MVP and running to link them all up. Yeah, that's another great uh, scenario, right? Okay, so this looks good. Show, am I missing something on the interface? Yeah, FlexVPN I hear is a great option. Yeah, there's no crypto map on the interface. Oh yeah, this is, oftentimes they come back up, uh, shut down. So it started the registration, but it can't even communicate with the device, so. Oh, it's trying to register to key server. Okay, makes sense. Uh, show IP interface brief. Okay, coming up, coming right up. Show run section crypto. Yeah, there. Uh, I was trying to remember what FlexVPN does that um, that GetVPN doesn't. Okay, we always get this. Registration complete, install policy success. So we get the tech, we get the keck. OSPF adjacency, that's good. Registration to key server, complete. Policies installed. There are quite a few, oh yeah? Well, it looks like to me that you still have to have a pre-shared key, right? Or get VPN. Crypto ISA camp key, which I mean, makes sense. You could use your certificate too, I'm sure, right?
IPv2 availability. Okay, IPsec is almost a must-have. DMVPN has an option to not use IPsec. Are you talking about for phase one? Show crypto. Um, GDOI, key server members, as in a crypto configuration, yeah. Okay, these, these folks are registered. Rekeys, we don't expect any rekeys at this stage. VPN. Yeah, I have no idea. I think I understood that, um, you know, I'd watched a video on this by Brian McGann, I and E, uh, Routing and switching written video series. And I seem to remember something about whenever you want to change the key in DMVPN with IPsec, for example, um, it's not easy. Let's say you suspected that, like your pre shared key got out, right? Um, it seemed like to me, if I remember that. Making the transition would mean downtime in DMVPN with IPsec, whereas with GetVPN, you might be able to avoid downtime. Uh, and yeah, you can use search too. That could be wrong. I should look that up though, because oftentimes the written exam questions are about how this or that is different. And I wonder, isn't it on the revised blueprint seems like I may have seen it on there um, yeah no okay yeah describe get VPN Well, yeah, that would be a good idea to do a chart like uh, IPsec VPNs versus on DMVPN, for example, and um, GetVPN, um, FlexVPN. Isn't FlexVPN the iteration of EasyVPN? I know EasyVPN was used for a while, and isn't FlexVPN sort of the next generation EasyVPN, or am I wrong about that? I think EasyVPN was for dynamic uh vpn clients man I, i'm so behind on my pro uh flex vpn first okay so it's the next generation of dmvpn gotcha um man they you know it's funny anytime a recruiter would would try to hound me um i remember when i first moved here i just tried to get in touch with some recruiters just to you know um, I always like to ha be in touch with one or two that I think are decent. Uh, you never know. I mean, if I got fired tomorrow, uh, I could at least know someone personally that I could go ahead and talk to, right? So I try to maintain some relationships. They do change over a lot, though. Uh, but yeah, I talked to some, and you know, that was always the thing. Like, we do security, we do security, we do security. Um, it's hot. I mean, it's still hot, even with all the changes to cloud and things like that. Uh, Security is still super hot, and um, everybody wants you to do that. Or, or, you know, can you do ice? Can you do, uh, man, it's, and I just don't enjoy it, to be honest, over the routing and switching. Um, I do enjoy, like, working with cert. I, I work on the, on the uh, I was still sort of am an F5 uh, SME, and 
I had to work a lot with uh, SSL standards and um, things like that. So that's where I started to get a little more into SSL security and H HTTPS and handshaking and um, so in Azure, let me tell you, I work in Azure a lot um, now. It's my full-time job and the, some of the biggest struggles we have had is with some of the Azure, native Azure services that, you know, pretty much, I mean, you don't have to do HTTP on everything, but we do. I mean, we do HTTPS, I should say. And managing those certificates um, with some of those devices is, is always a challenge. Uh, recruiters annoy me a little. They tend to go for people who say the buzzwords, yes. End up getting scenarios who does everything by the book and doesn't have much well-rounded experience. So true, man. Recruiters annoy the hell out of me. Excuse me for interrupting. Hey, not an interruption at all, Jimmy. Good to see you, Jimmy67 today uh, in the chat. Appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you chiming in. But yeah, they do. It's hard to find a good recruiter. I have found a few in my career. There's actually a good one I know in Orlando, and uh, he does tend to annoy, but... Um, what I, what I tend to do is I give them like a Google Voice um, for my phone number. Never give, never give out your real phone number. And um, my Google Voice number, if like, let's say I'm, I'm expecting a call, like I will forward the Google Voice number to my real phone number. But if I'm not, man, all the calls go to that. My phone never rings. I can look at the, you know, listen to the voicemails from my computer at le leisure. Um, John and both AWS Azure have drawbacks for the built-in services like AWS's VPN gateway. It doesn't support IV2. Really? Yeah, you know, I found some the word that comes to mind there is maturity. So yeah, they're they're continuing to mature their solutions, is the politically is what the salespeople would say. But yeah. Uh, there's a lot of areas like that, networking and security that they um they're, they're far behind some of the things that we're used to on-premise, right? Um, all right, let's see what we've got here now. Let's, let's just do a ping. I'm just going to ping 10.187. Let's get our topology back. See if we can wrap this lab up because I'm ready to, like, take a break, chill out a little bit this evening. I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm probably going to just study some more, but uh, study on the couch with the, with the uh, tablet. And just, you know, chill before work tomorrow. Get to bed early. Um, 10.187.25. Not that I'm expecting to work. I think they just need to mature the ones they've got instead of going for the one inch thick, 100 foot wide approach. <laughs> yeah, a lot of people would agree with that. Okay, so we have in caps, no decaps. So it's like, it's almost like, don't we need, all right, so over here, there's no crypto map on the interface. And I'm, I mean, this is a configuration, the solution to the lab. It seems to me almost that you would need to apply a crypto map here as well. Yeah, this doesn't have a crypto map though, does it? Doesn't have a traditional crypto map. But it looks like it's not it's not creating an IPsec profile outbound, the key server. I think the issue is on the key server. Um let me try what if I try to ping yeah, invalid SPI. Uh, ping 10.187.128.2. Uh, ah, see that pings. Show crypto IPsec SA. Maybe I'm not supposed to be pinging. All right, that's working. So spoke to spoke is working. 
That was not working before. But it is working now. So maybe I'm not supposed to be able to um, ping here. Or there's something else I would need to do. Like maybe um, the scope of the requirements of this lab is to encrypt only spoke-to-spoke -spoke traffic. And in order for me to encrypt traffic between ping traffic because that's the only thing in the list then i would need to create a crypto map and apply it to this interface does it have a gdoi key uh crypto gdoi key server uh total well this is not a key server uh gdoi Group identity, key, management path. Yeah, it's, it's registered. Uh, someone's at the door. One moment. Okay, so we should be able to verify. All right, so Formosa, um, this is not running DMVPN as far as I know. Show DMVPN interface spoke. Yeah, we're not running DMVPN. Uh, Yeah, that's for tunnel interface. That's for the DMVPN is over here. I'm actually labbing this cloud right here. I uh, appreciate that though. So is that why it's flapping? Does it, I think it's stable now. Folks, I think we are stable. Like I'm, let's just verify. Let's, let's do a PCAP here. And uh, Jazz01. Like, I haven't read through all the material in the lab. I'm going to do that later tonight. But um, I'm pretty sure that the scope of the lab is just to encrypt traffic between um, the. All right, so let's do a ping. Like right now, the uh, the access list for the scope of the traffic is just ICMP. Ooh, that was close. I thought you were about to get swatted, Lan. Why is that? <laughs> so if we do ping... Dot one eight seven dot one two eight dot two. Yeah, check it out. See, it is encrypting traffic between the spokes. Networking is dark art. Yes, indeed. All right, so that's working. So, sequence numbers. Yeah, that's fine. Well, it's we're good here, folks. We are good. Um, show IP route OSPF. Yeah. So now I should be able to ping the loopbacks. 223, 
Capsulating security payload. Guess I've been hanging too long for the other discords. Amazing. Yeah, it works. Uh, you know, so this is what I think. This is just me. It's my opinion. We can try it. It's a lab. We can break whatever we want. Um, oh, you know what I want to capture? Because I've tried to, you know how as a kid for biology, they'd send you out with a bunch of, you know, um, uh, glass slides and you had to go collect all these different um, specimens, right? So part of this labbing uh, that I try to do is always collect a specimen. So this is a good specimen, and in specimen in terms of, you know, wire shark captures. But I want to capture the key registration process. So I want to kind of start that again. And I don't know that that works, actually, when it seems to. And that's the thing. Um, one thing I'm not sure about is I know with IPsec, you can build your tunnel configuration all day long. But if you don't have any traffic, interesting traffic, right? Um, attempting to traverse the IPsec tunnel. Nothing's going to happen. So, MITM, Man in the Middle Time, yes. Is there a song, Man in the Middle? Is there a song for that? Uh, it seems to have. I'm thinking Michael Jackson, something. Could be, could be wrong there. All right, so let's, let's do a recapture. And Jazzera 1. Honestly, I think I goofed it up because I um I started out the lab with like the wrong I was juxtaposing a couple of numbers. Yeah, we tend to just run a routing protocol over the tunnel to send hello packets. Yeah. Yeah, it, they with IVSEC sometimes call it stapling the tunnel. Um you want to have some sort of traffic dynamic that, like, at a certain interval, is going to keep the tunnel up. Uh, depending on what you have on both ends, right? Like, if you have a sonic wall, oh my gosh, uh, at one end, and you have a Cisco ASA at, the, ASA at the other end, when you get the tunnel up, you hope that it stays up. Uh, some of them are a little more buggy than others for whatever reason. So yeah, stapling those up sometimes is a good idea because that just is less that you have to sort of reset everything in the future. Um, keep tunnel open for business, yes. It is either that or we just use an F5 to send a health check. Yep, that's another good idea. Good use for it, right? Great use for it. Those F5 health monitors, man, they are uh, persistent. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to bounce this interface. Actually, I'm going to do a, let's do a clear. Clear crypto GDOI um, group. Grop. Uh, what is it called? Show run section GDOI. I've been working with F5 so much recently. Oh, really, man? I love I love the F5 only because um, at my current job, a uh, number of years ago, when I first, well, several years ago, when I first started, um, like the senior network engineer was going to train train me, and another engineer, um, well, basically one left after like a month and a half. I was there. And we were small at the time. We've, we've been through several. We've been acquired. Now we're like a Fortune 50 company. But, um, yeah, at the time, like, no one really, I'd never worked on the F5. And, man, I had to dive in, like, right away. One of those situations. Uh, and at first, man, I was so confused because we use, uh, especially the, at that, at that time, it was called GTM, you know, the DNS. Now it's called Big IP DNS. Um, we use that and the LTMs, among other things. 
And at first it was blowing my mind, like, how does this all work together? <laughs> I'm confused. Uh, but now I love it, now that I understand how it works. Uh, the group is GDOI group. Yes. Okay. Uh, good thing to have on the CV. Yes, everyone wants, and I've got a lot of annoying annoyances from recruiters on that too. Dynamic DNS. Yeah, I've used ASM too. Yes, so the ASM is cool. Um, you can do the WAF, you know, on the ASM, which everybody, you know, you gotta have WAF these days. I'd like to get an F5 in here. I'd like to get with my account rep and get a uh, one year access to an image. And, uh, you know, you're supposed to be able to get a personal license. Not that I need to, I just want to because it's, I'm geeky and, you know, why not? Uh, Let's see here. Okay, so now show crypto GDOI KS members. Okay, I think I almost need to clear shut, no shut over here. Yeah, I thought about getting it as well, uh, Kieran, John, and M about the F5 201 cert. I've been to this, a uh, number of the classes, a few, well, two, maybe. Um, I just haven't really pursued it. It's not, I'm in Enterprise, and it's not really a big deal for them that I get the cert. Um, it's not too, too hard from what I understand. I've talked to someone else who has tested on it. And um, that's what I've heard anyway. Um, but yeah, I've just been so, you know, working so hard on the CCIE. By the time I get this done, then I think my interest will have shifted a little more to some of the cloud certs. All right, so let's see what we got here. Yeah, this process does not really reset very gracefully, at least from what I can tell. Actually, we did this already. It just took a minute. It just took a minute. That's cool. We'll give it a minute. And we should have here, I should have some traffic though on the Git VPN. I wonder what it's gonna look like. Like what protocol? Uh, there's some packet captures in the lesson, quite a few, actually. At least it, I had the impression. Is this just a ping? Probably. But we noticed, though, and we saw this earlier, that it's basically IPv4 header and then the ESP. Payload. What's the next protocol type? 50, yeah. Oh uh, yeah, one of the CCIA's workers taking the exam. He said it was easy, but he used a CCIA, yeah. Uh, anything compared to, once you get through the CCIA is probably gonna seem somewhat easy, I would imagine. All right, so we probably don't, do we have any, has it tried to check into the key server? We got this thing again where we need to, I think, actually generate some traffic. Uh, this thing spawns like eight windows. The uh, I'm not complaining though, I'm glad I have it. I'm glad I have the wrapper for the Mac. It, it works, it works well, it gets the job done. 
And on the Mac, at system level operations, that's saying a lot. All right, so ping 10.187.128.2. Show crypto IPsec SA. Okay, we've got, uh, so we must be registered by now. Um, I did not, however, see anyway yet the registration process. Uh, let's look for destination, key destination. Uh, actually, IP destination is 10.187.255.254. Okay, UDP, this is it. So this is gonna be port 848, that's right. And the data, right, using, so it, this is hash with our pre-shared key, right? So there's, uh, and then we should have a response. Ah, put that back. IP source 10.47. Okay, I'm using the wrong, what is the or? It's just or, right? Yeah, there's a response. Sequence number 86, and okay, cool. So there it is. Now let's do and. All right, I'm just gonna save this. Trying to think, do we need anything else? No, that, that's good. This is what we captured. Uh, this UDP header is eight bytes. And then the payload is 92 bytes. So let's save this. Uh, all packets, and this is gonna be, um, Get VPN key exchange. Or, well, registration, right? This is really the registration. Where did I save that? Okay, it's here. Uh, we're going to say get VPN member registration server okay and come back here show GDI debt I think on the member show show crypto GDI detail Oh yeah, this is good stuff. I think I used it without the detail earlier. So group server list, because you can have multiple, right? Uh, ACL received from the key server. This is the cool part. I think this is one of the big advantages of um, GetVPN, right? Is how it pushes these policies down. Once you register, you get an ACL, right? So that's cool. You're centrally managing what traffic you're, that all the members are going to encrypt. Um, which, you know, as far as I know, you can't do that with DMVPN. Uh, yeah, that's the one. Registration status. Succeeded registration. Attempted three. Registered. Yeah. Um, and then these are a lot of the detail ciphers, any any ESP. These are good bits, my friend. These are good bits. I'm glad we finally got it to work. Here's the SPI. A traffic encryption key policy for the current key server policy AC is downloaded. Um Nice. Um, cool. So we saw, and, and the other thing we saw in the packet capture is just 
the traffic the only traffic encrypted was what was used by the um what was specified in the policy that we downloaded now you know what i want to try is let's say we want the key server to act sort of as a member so what if we were to encrypt add a crypto map would the key server register itself that i don't know. i'll probably save that for for the section that i read uh get vpn as a tunnel less vpn technology for private networks yes uh we use a single sa for all group members you have group member key server two encryption keys the gdoi is the protocol between key server and group members protect with the ice camp phase one ipsec we use esp tunnel with address preservations this means we copy the inner ip header to the outer ip header ah right 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 yeah because we're using tunnel mode right Teams register and authenticate with the key server and receive IPsec and security policy. All GIPs have the same IPsec security association, so they can encrypt. Ah, okay, that's what makes it simple, right? Oh man, you gotta get early. Uh, thanks for hanging out, Kieran John. Enjoyed, uh, enjoyed the good bits, and you have a great, great uh, sleep. And we shall see you tomorrow. I will not be streaming tomorrow because I'm going to be meeting up in the evening with uh, Show IP Interface Brief, actually. We're going to meet here in Orlando. But, uh, yeah, talk to you soon, my friend. Uh, enjoy, enjoyed uh, chewing the fat. All right, folks. Well, that, I think, what we're going to do is we're going to save this config so we can always come back and refer to it. Thank you, here I will. Uh, I'm looking forward to it. We're also going to meet up with Necker Cube, aka Jedediah Casey, who lives in the area. Um, so it should be fun. Should be fun. All right, we're going to save this off, and that way we can come back anytime uh, to play with this. Lab is uh, bursting at the seams here. Let's just do full screen and get a snapshot here. Okay, R63, we'll take care of that here in a second. Probably because uh, one thing I've noticed is you can't like move the lab around and expect it to export the configs properly. Okay, 63 exported. Uh, let's just go back to this and export this again just to make sure. While that's going as well, let's pull up the uh, flashcards for GetVPN. How does EIGER BOTP? That's.
Interesting. Okay. DMVPN uses multi point multicast GRE to encapsulate both data and control plane traffic. Whereas OTP uses Lisp UDP based encapsulation for the data plane while running EIGRP natively without additional encapsulation. Uh, this means no tunnel interfaces are required for OTP, right? All OTP traffic can be encrypted with Git VPN, whereas DMVPN relies on IPsec tunnel configuration. DMVPN relies on NHRP for mappings, whereas OTP uses EIGRP for the mapping, and no other control plane protocol is required. Yeah, I hope to lab over the top protocol before the exam. How is encryption performed differently between DMVPN and EIGRP OTP? Yeah. Okay, these have probably exported. Let's just export this just in case again. And let's just take a little uh, inventory of our lab here. Once that finishes. Let's just, let's just check in with our lab here. Let's see how the lab's doing. Let's do a little health check. F40 failed to export. Okay. I'm going to have my mouse not hovering over the lab. Okay, exported. Good. And let, now let's go ahead and lock the lab here. And I want to do a... We're not going to console to all nodes. That would be crazy right now. Startup configs. All right, I should be able to turn these on. Um, H61, that's interesting, and H64. Um, uh, okay. Sixty two and sixty three are here. Sixty four is not, so let's just double check him. Hmm. Oh, did I not, not do a right mem? Huh, I don't even have the option. That's strange. I think I can go back and look at my notifications somewhere. Okay, here we go. Look, check that out. 92%. All right, this is the real telltale right here. KSM. Yeah, that's on. I don't know what these things do. I think that has to do a swap memory or something like that. Um, all right, so lab details. I'm wanting to see my notification log. Oh, okay. I wonder if, can I make changes here? Let's 
So I have 243 configured objects, actions. None, okay. Probably in the pro version. Yeah, I don't get why I can't turn this on. Switch three. Cancel. Um, I know switch three, I have rebooted it and it has come back up just fine. Okay, rid of the disk. That's good. Export config. Fail to export config, why is that? I wonder if it's just taking too long. Maybe I should shut down some of the other routers. I definitely don't want to lose the configuration. The switch I'm not so worried about. Fail to export config, yeah. All right. Let's uh, shut down some routers here. I know these are backed up. We're going to stop these. Yeah, uh, I'm at the point. I mean, I'm getting backups every night of the virtual machine uh, in Azure. So, but I put a lot of work into this thing. So I want to make sure that I have it copied off the, uh, the lab file and that all the configurations are correctly exported. Got the CCIE. Yeah. One day I want to get it, man. Hopefully 2019. Uh, Zoltra Lord. I have the written exam scheduled for December 31st, New Year's Eve. All right, going to stop these routers as well. Hey, thank you very much. I need it. Need all I can get. Today we did a lot of uh, VPN tunneling labs. Uh, la layer 2 tunneling. Uh, we did some tunneling over MPLS. Get VPN. Now we're just trying to gracefully shut down the lab, sort of end the day, and make sure that uh, the 
All the configurations are saved to the lab file. A lot many hours of work are represented here with the um, end product hopefully being knowledge. Okay, a lot of these routers are stopping. That's good. Very good, very good. Yeah, 6RD, that one was fun. That uh, was a lot of my day yesterday, actually, is ensuring uh, that 6RD, that I understood when the heck was going on there. Okay, all, a lot of these routers, okay, a lot of routers shut down now. So let's check on these startup configs and see why we can't seem to capture. Although I think this is a misnomer because I've rebooted this switch a few times and it's come back with the correct configuration. So I'm not sure what the deal is there. Uh, let's try to export it again. Yes, exported, finally. There's just too much going on. All right, let's see who else needs an export here. Router 55. Where are you, 55? I don't even know how to find you. Here you are. Uh, did I do this today? I did do this lab today. No, don't do that. Cannot translate. All right, we'll come back to you. Uh, 56, 58. First, we're going to do no IP domain lookup on this bad boy. No IP domain lookup. Okay, that was a good lab. And now let's try to export these. This was a L2 Atom tunnel. Any transport over MPLS. Fifty five exported. Fifty six exported. Good. it exported awesome now let's go back okay now we just need two more which is h61 and router 64 okay let's shut these down so many routers so host 61, and router 64 over here.
All right, let's export. Good, that one's done. And now 64. Done. All right, should be all set. Start of configs, all green. Yeah. All right, just for grins, I'm going to export all. Yeah, this is this has been fun. Uh, what is our what are our lab details now? Our our lab status. Yeah, this is what I need to be checking. And we're definitely hitting high percentage, so we're going to have to upgrade our VM for sure. Our VM is getting to where it can't handle it. Um, that's something I'll probably work on tomorrow. I already have a VM here uh, in Azure. I just um, I've got to get the SSH key from another box because I built it, I deployed it using... Um, login authentication disabled and I deployed it using a, an SSH key. This is the one I'm on now, which is the DS16, D16 SV3. Oh wow, that's the highest I've seen the CPU get. At 50. Interesting. Yeah, we're definitely pushing the max here. Pushing our luck. So time to upgrade. Uh, what else we have open? Okay, we'll close that. I got some good PCAPs today. Uh, I will copy these to our PCAP, PCAP repo. And we will do a git push. Um, CD. Packet captures. Git pull. Um, more tunneling PCAPs. So yeah, good stuff. Those are our specimens for the day. You can always get uh, uh, sync this repo if you like. Uh, I've got about, I think I've got four repos there. Four or so. This, I will eventually get this up to the repo as well. These, really all of my, all my labs some point and let me see what else here well that's working yes yeah, so folks um, the uh, for a wrap up today it's been a good day uh, tomorrow I won't be streaming because I'm doing a uh, meet up with some other land tamers in meet space uh, in the Orlando area. We're, we're doing a meet up tomorrow during the time I would normally be streaming, but I will be back Wednesday, regular scheduled time of 7 p.m. Eastern time. If all goes well, and no production issues I have to work on. Um, but this this pretty much ends the studycation uh, and the streams related to studycation. Um, Really quick, do you have videos for setting up the Azure? I don't in my forces. Um, I will though. As a matter of fact, I have a, um, it, it's pretty simple to be honest. Um, if you wanna do a manual deploy, um, at some point what you wanna do is do, well, you don't have to do this, but I'm working on an automated deployment 
So I can actually deploy the virtual machine now um, automatically using Azure DevOps. I've been kind of waiting to finish that so I could package it up and just make it available to the public. Um, but in the interim, I should go ahead and do a video and hopefully I will soon. But yeah, I've got these, uh, this build right here that I've deployed. Yeah, the last few failed. This is where I was trying to do some fancy stuff, but this is for a, a big server, 20 CPU. But yeah, I'll do one. I will do one for sure coming up. Um, but yeah, so the rest of the week, though, I will be focusing on still trying to get through uh, the material. I'm going to have basically two weeks to get through the security and about three weeks through the security and the infrastructure portions of the um, of the CCI written material in networklessons.com. So those two units is what I'll be hitting. And, um, you know, tune in, normal time. You can follow me on Twitter, Instagram, YouTube. Uh, if you missed something want to go catch a particular part of this, one of these labs, I upload uh, the streams to YouTube. And uh, you can also, uh, if you have a Twitch Prime account sitting around you want to use, you can always use that here. We would be happy to accept it. And thanks so much for the follows and the, and the chats and the support and just watching. Uh, Feral Packet, which workbook is that diagram from? A combination, really. So I made this, and I've been primarily labbing out of um, networklessons.com. Um, but what I've been doing is just using my own uh, like networking scheme, network numbering, and my own topology. And like generally the labs will have three routers, right? So what I'll do is instead of doing a new lab with three routers, I'll just add on to the topology, add three more routers and just, that's why I call it the router collage. Um, but yeah, we're up to 60, 64 routers and three switches um, using the viral images. So, but yeah, folks, stay tuned in. Um, and, you know, I'm sending everybody good bits out to the universe and all your studies. It's Monday, folks. So Monday's a good day to kind of regroup, strategize, look forward to the rest of the week, what you want to get accomplished uh, towards your certi certi certification goals. So, you know, get planned, get organized, get going, and, uh, you know, we'll encourage each other here in the community. Thanks so much for tuning in, folks. We shall see you back here Wednesday night. Fall goes well here on the Land Tamer stream.